We welcome you live to Knights Field at Crestview High School. We are live on WOSN already week three of the high school football season. I'll go again, everyone, alongside my partner, Miles Holiday. I'm Randy Roberts. Miles, we're set here. Regional rivalry, the 26th meeting all time between Crestview and the visiting Raiders of Wing Trace. Yeah, a little bit of dislike, always a good thing on a Friday night, isn't it? Where else would you rather be than right here, right now? We've got a fun fun contest in front of us. I can tell you this meeting will be the 26th all-time between these two. Crestview leads the series 14-11 to thanks to wins in seven games in a row. Did not meet in the 2020 season. And 10 of the last 11, the last Wayne Trace win in this series. Come back in 2013, a 54-41 game. And if you're a Wayne Trace fan, why does the year 2013 sound familiar? Oh, hey, by the way, that's the year you went to the D6 state title game. So uh, Wayne Trace trying to uh, bounce back here, and we'll talk a little bit about the Raiders and Wayne Trace Miles. One and one on the season, went to, to Fort Recovery, opened the year with an 18-14 win, were shut out last week at home against Patrick Henry, 12-0. Yeah, Coach Holden said to his team this week, they're not playing great football, but they're still one and one. It's better to be one and one than not playing great football because you're going to play great football down the road. This kind of firm things up. One thing that's really been a problem for them, losing the football to their opponent. They're turning it over way too much. Very fortunate to be one and one. The amount of turnovers that they've given up. And you look at their running game too, Randy, only averaging about 2.9 yards per carry. So if you're not running the football effectively and you're turning it over, you're very fortunate to be a one and one. Now, one thing that is good about Coach Holden's team, he's a defensive minded guy. They're playing pretty stiff stingy defense holding the opponents to only 14 and 12 points so 13 points per average if I'm ma my math is correct. At junior quarterback Kyle Stoller is going to struggle a little bit as uh, they're honoring the 2005 playoff team here at uh, Crestview tonight. Stoller 39 to 73 so far on the year that's about 53 and a half percent 331 yards which you talked about miles six interceptions through two games four last week in that loss and just four killers yeah, sure against were. the Patriots and hey, Patrick Henry. If three of them were deep inside of Patriot territory, so they're driving to score. You know, red zone turnovers will kill you every time. There's the, that 2005 team, first playoff team in Crestview history. And all those guys, we talked to them, they said they're all still in playing shape. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely would be. So we take a look at uh, Wayne Trace. 264 yards of offense a game while allowing 208, and you mentioned it, eight times they've given the ball away so far this year. It's just amazing. You're averaging four turnovers a game, but yet you're one and one. So they get the run game scored away. They're going to keep playing good defense. Don't turn the ball over. Things will look bright for them. They got this game in front of them, and then all of a sudden they're going to get into the meat of the GMC. The thing about the GMC this year is, yeah, you really look like anyone can go get it this year. There's not a huge favorite. So they get those things squared away, they got a good chance. And some uh, defensive players obviously just allowing a, a little over 200 yards a game defensively pretty solid. And then you throw in a punter like Derek Dangler, 40-yard average on five kicks this year. Well, Wayne Tracy, one of the things they do defensively is they move around, make, make you be confused, trying to find – it's a 3-5 defense. So trying to find those five linebackers at times can be a problem, and they're quick guys. You take a look at some of the guys on that defense. Kel Wyden is number four outside, inside linebacker guy. A lot of guys with position flexibility. Blake Stoller, Ezra Sin. Boy, how many times have we done a Wayne Trace game with a Sin last name, right? It's mandatory. So they, they got some guys that can fly around and play some good defense. They're going to be challenged tonight, though, because that Crestview offense, boy, are they loaded for bear. They can score in a hurry. And before we get any further into our pregame, we need to tell you that our pregame sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Crestview and Wayne Trace is the State Bank. Invest in a Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. Miles, let's talk a little bit about the homestanding Knights of Crestview. 2-0 so far in the young season. Really haven't been challenged in a couple of games. One here in their opener, 51-14 over Parkway. Went to Hicksville and got a big win, 42-12 last week. The thing that makes them so dynamic offensively is the playmaking ability of Mr. Hunter. Unbelievable. He is a talent. Hopefully he is ready to go tonight. Had a little bit of an ankle injury. Carson Hunter, you'll see him number one quarterback. If he's not going to play at the quarterback spot, it's going to be Bryson Penix. That's why you see the slash right there. It's Hunter or Penix, but it looked like yesterday at practice that Hunter's going to be good to go. Boy, he's dynamic, Randy. He, there's not a throw he can't make. 
Loves the throw to post, loves the throw to seven route. You said Bryce and Penix, 48 yards rushing. So it looks like a pair of kind of dual threat guys, neither one of them could really run and obviously do run this Crestview offense. Yeah, James Lawson Hauser, Hauser the uh, head football coach here, loves to run inside and outside zone. So it makes it real easy for the offensive linemen. Those offensive linemen, all they got to do, Randy, is just get on a path, work their way in con conjunction with each other, and get up to the second level. Now, Easy for the running backs. All you got to do is make one read, and then go ahead and cut or keep running fast. And they do have a couple of threats when they do throw the football. Their biggest one, wide receiver Kellen Putnam. Five catches, 183 yards, 37 yards per reception. <laughs> if I'm playing him, I play way, way off, right? Don't let him run by you. Let him catch it in front of you, come up, make the tackle, because he is a lights out type of receiver. How about uh, on defense? For the Knights linebacker, Zayden Martin, a couple of intersections. You talk about Penix, the two-way player. We're going to see a lot of two-way players. A couple of rosters hovering around 35, 40 players. Penix with 19 stops. You got Bo Eggleson, the defensive end, with 17, a big hitter in the backfield, and Hunter Jones as well. Yeah, Eggleston leads the team, really making plays in the backfield. He has a sack. Six pressures and a tackle for loss. Now, don't be uh, surprised by seeing someone else helping them out in the backfield. And that's Sheets, number 14, 16 tackles, six hurries. He's getting all over the front and, and, and in the face of the quarterback anytime he throws. It's a defense that really gets a lot of help because they score so many points, right? You score tons of points, you're getting out of sorts on what you want to do offensively, so it really helps you out playing defense. So while the teams are running under the field, Miles, let's run through this quickly. Let's take a look. A look at our State Bank checks of the game, and let's start with the Raiders of Wayne Trace. Yeah, number one for Wayne Trace, right? This is easy. Stop sharing. Sharing usually is a good thing, partner, but not in football. Don't share the football with your opponent. Hold on to the footballs. They have averaged four turnovers, it's four interceptions last week. Way too much. Number two, spill it. Spill it back in. This is a Crestview offense that loves to get on the perimeter. Force it back inside, spill it back in, make it an A and B gap type of team so that the, the Crestview team has to come at you instead of run around you. And then final, that final but not least, blitz the empty. You're going to see a lot of four-by-one sets tonight out of Crestview. They go empty. You know the quarterback's either going to run or throw, so go ahead and blitz them, get some hits on the quarterback. And before we get to our state bank checks for Crestview, we'll step aside here as I believe the Crestview band is set to perform our national anthem. Randy Roberts, Miles Holiday, back with you here from uh, Knights Field at Crestview High School. All right, Miles, talked about Wayne Trace. Let's take a look at the State Bank checks of the game for the Crestview Knights. Yeah, number one for Crestview, combos are yummy. Not the snack food, but combo blocks. They run that inside-outside zone. Combo on the defensive line. Keep your eyes up to the second level. Combo up, get a hat on hat. That run game will be successful. Number two, have good tires. Good tires are important to roadsters, to speedsters, to fast cars. And one tire that they got to check on, that is Mr. Hunter. 
Carson Hunter, he's got a little bit of an ankle injury. It took place against Hicksville a week ago. At practice yesterday, he looked pretty good. Does he have good tires tonight? Well, we're going to find out. And last but not least, special teams alert. Colton Royer, special teams coach here at Crestview, he's got to have his guys ready. Wayne Trace, they love to do all kinds of stuff when it comes to special teams. They'll put the ball up in the air. They'll onside kick it. you got to be on the alert. If not, it's going to be a big-time problem on special teams. And again, our pregame sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Crestview and Wayne Trace is the State Bank invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. Yeah, you see there the Wayne Trace State Bank's checks again. Stop sharing way too many turnovers, as we said. Spill it back in, make it an A and B Bruce gap Hughes type of game. And you see empty formations. Go ahead and bring a blitzer. Empty formations, folks, that's when the quarterback is the only guy in the backfield. Do you understand that uh, I believe Wayne Trace won the coin toss, deferred until the second half? Yeah, they did defer. I thought in a game like this, you might want to take the ball first and see where you're at. And I know you want to control your own destiny, but sometimes you don't let the cards fall where they may. Pick things back up in the second half. Usually defensive-minded coaches are the ones that like to defer. Just about ready to go here for, again, this 26th meeting between Wayne Trace and Crestview. We want to tell you that our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Lodix Jewelry. Lodix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over seven years. Visit them in Coldwater or Van Wert or online at Lodix.com. And our instant replay tonight is Carry Insurance. They're, they are located in Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. And our touchdown sponsor, which I assume we should see at least a couple of those this evening, right, Miles? Uh, we're going to see some points, that's for sure. And this is a Crestview team, 51 against Parkway, 42 against Hicksville. And from what I understand, it could have been even more against Hicksville, but they kind of throttled down in the second half as Hunter was out of the game. We'll let Penix run things. Oh, you see a beautiful skyline here in uh, Crestview. LC LSI, Leland Smith Insurance Service, Remember touchdown sponsor right there. The do you want to do the rest of the read while you're at it, or are you just going to go ahead and, I, I like, got, like I, Miles was saying, <laughs> Leland Smith Insurance is our touchdown sponsor. I was trying to get his attention. So any touchdown score tonight sponsored by Leland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for all of your insurance needs. I'm like Ron Burgundy. Just put it in front of me. I, I read it. I guess, right? Who put a question mark on the teleprompter? <laughs> Uh, you got to love live television, don't you, partner? It's Crestview in the black with a blue. Wayne Trace in the white with the red numerals, blue pants. Yeah, Everyone's going to wear a blue helmet with a red stripe. Big uh, blackout night for uh, Crestview. Broke out the black jerseys. I think it was a mistake about an hour and a half ago when it was about 90 degrees, but now as the yeah, temperature's dropping. Cooled off a little bit. Yeah, you can't see the Wayne Trace. You see that in the upper uh, right-hand side of your screen. Wayne Trace student section with the neon out, or they got a lot of uh, road construction employees in their I student section. I saw those guys on 24 on the way out here. They're setting out more orange barrels. Ready to go. Most places around the area, save for the WBL, wrapping up your non-conference tests. Where do, you, where do you go to get those neon vests? The neon vest store? Wait, every, every student section does this night, right? So whoever's producing those, they're making a They're killing. sitting around the board meetings and they're like, I don't know what's going on, but we're selling a ton of these lately. That is one of the fun things that student sections do now. They all coordinate the nights. Mm -hmm. Good school spirit at a lot of the schools that we go to. So favorite part of these kickoffs, both teams are on the field. It's like a timeout in basketball. Number both teams four, back four, out on the left field. Left we got to make sure that clock goes all the way to zero. Players before Back we uh, nice. send this number one two, off. Hunter Jones and number nine, Isaac Klein. Kale Winnens has the ball teed up at the 40-yard line. Now you remember Cal from the baseball season mm -hmm. had that unbelievable catch down the left field line from his shortstop position right over top to his shoulder. Spent some time with him at practice uh, this week. Talked a little bit about some Celtics basketball. He's a big Celtics fan as well. You seem to find those guys anywhere. Yeah, it's funny how people like winners. Weird. Now we are underway. Short kick. This one's going to be fielded. It'll be mishandled, then fielded at about the 20-yard line. 
And a decent return out to about the 30. Good field position here for Crestview as we open up the night. Yeah, Putman doesn't panic. That's off to him. Opening play of the game puts it on the ground, but collected himself. And that Wayne Trace kickoff team might have overran it a little bit. Had a hole in the middle. They quickly collapsed, but good starting position for this high-powered Crestview offense. And you already see right there, number one in the huddle, Carson Hunter. So Hunter will get to call it quarterback here as the Knights start from their own 30-yard line. Just underway, thank everyone for joining us live tonight here on WOSN. A good look at that three down lineman front, five linebackers behind him. Three receivers set, third receiver, or receiver came in motion. A hunter nowhere to go, he's gonna fire this one downfield, has a man open, and stretching out as far as he can is Kellen Putnam to come up with a big catch. This is a really good route by Putnam because he sees his quarterback, Break it back, roll to the left. It's a flood route to the right. But Putnam sees his quarterback, and your, your rule is, if you're the deepest receiver, go deep towards the end zone where your quarterback's rolling. Tremendous catch. Now it's at the ankle. Looks pretty good early in this game. 32 yards on the reception on the first play of the game, and quickly, Crestview is in Wayne Trace territory at the 38-yard line. Handoff, no one there. A little problem in the backfield as Hunter's going to have to keep this Hunter one himself, and he's going to be taken for a loss. As Ezra Sin comes knifing in after the Lost miscommunication, you see right there Penix and Hunter talking about, you went this way, I went that way. We should have met in the middle. That's a huge loss after the big play to start this game. Wayne Trace, stingy on defense, shows it again. A loss of four is going to bring up a second and 14. One thing we didn't talk about in our pregame, we'll have to talk about as the game goes in, just the... Uh, the amount of, uh, we get a handoff coming to the near side and a good run, getting some positive yards, but looks like we are gonna have a flag. You're gonna see it right here, number five, Penix gets on his guy, but he's gonna grab the inside and twist and turn. Look, if this is Wednesday and it's league night in wrestling and you take the guy to the ground, fantastic. That's a two point takedown but here on Friday night, you cannot do that. Yeah, hold it does come back as the flag is thrown back to the 45 yard line. So we'll get 10 yards from the infraction is gonna back up the Knights back into their own side of the field now. I, I like the decision by Matt Holden though to take the penalty as opposed to the result of the play and make it third down and 15. Second down and 25 is tough. And that is about what the Knights have. They'll flip this one out in the backfield and it's uh, Bryson Penix. Penix expect to see, could see a little bit of time at quarterback. And he Penix is going to get just about Penix nothing. Actually, they might lose a yard as we see the official on the far side Mike of the field Stover. back at the 46. Early in this game, Wayne Trace up front. The defensive linemen are doing a great job of standing up out of their stance after they come off and look Lots to see where the ball is going. Not over pursuing. Points. That time they read the quick little bubble to the right-hand side. Tough to complete that to the short side. Hey, you mentioned earlier Matt Holden, the head coach of Wayne Trace, Crestview assistant. So we'll have a little bit of that kind of back and forth through the game. Playing cover four, deep, deep look in the and secondary. Everyone coming in, trying to set up a screen. The and the field. first one in on that, I believe, is Blake Stoller as we're going to take a look at the replay. Yeah, you're going to see Stoller coming in inside backer blitz. He's going to get pressure, eight, cleaning Blake it up Stoller after his seven. buddy gets the, the pressure right there, and that is Blake Stoller knifing through, gets the initial pressure on the quarterback, Hunter. And That's buddy, what happened? It was first down at the 39. Now you're punting it from your own 28-29. That is not how you want to finish a drive. Yeah, there's a loss of 18 on that last play. So fourth and long, we'll say. And a good punt. Bit of a wobbler is going to come up, fielded at about the 45-yard line. And all that Tucker Antoine able to do is just kind of fall on it. But Number still 13, good field position Tucker for the Raiders. Yeah, it was really a smart play because he he really hustled up to catch that. You don't let it hit the ground. You save yourself some yards. He kind of lacks a days ago, lets it hit the ground. It could roll all the way inside your 40. Those are hidden yards. Nice job by Tucker Antoine. Well, that track looks a little, a little thick out there. Nice to see some natural grass, isn't it? 
So Raiders with the ball for the first time. Go with that spread set. Handoff here on first down. It's going to be straight ahead as they go with Kyle Slade, senior running back, and it looks like he's going to get no more than a yard. Yeah, Slade 15, did what he's supposed Kyle to. He's going to press a gap, try to get through to initial push. Five, Defensive Pierce. line collapsed down. Maybe Stiller could have pulled that, nine. but you want to establish inside run early, make it tough on those defensive linemen having to read it. Second and nine, back to that three receiver set out of the pistol once again. And it's going to be the same play going straight ahead. A little more positive yardage out of Kyle Slade. He's going to get into Crestview territory. Yeah, you see he puts his defensive end in a bind right there. Is he supposed to stay and play to quarterback or collapse down on the running back? Really good decision by Stoller to give it. Gain of six is going to bring up a third and a short two, long three. They'll go right back on the ground. And this is going to be a first down as they power forward. I like the fact that they went fast. Didn't allow that Crestview defense to get set up. Third down advantage because you're coming off the football and the defensive line still trying to get set. Officials are going to hold up play momentarily while they get the chain set. Gain of seven on the last run out of Slade. It's a first down. Now Wayne Trace playing with a little bit of tempo. Go to Slade once again. Fourth play in a row. He's going to get pushed back after he gets to the 40-yard uh, line. One of those players in there, Miles, it looked like Garrett Yinger, junior uh, defensive lineman. Yeah, Yinger came in, played it extremely well, hedged down the line of scrimmage, waiting to see if it's going to be a give or a pull. Made the decision, almost a tackle for loss, just a gain of one. Brings up second and nine. Now looking to throw, coming to the near sideline. That's going to go over the head of everyone. It, Intended for senior receiver race price. Yeah, Stoller's just got it locked in right away. Like he's going vertical, shows off the arm, but the free safety just comes flying over to help. Easy read. Spieth comes over, two on one situation. All of a sudden, now third and long facing the Raiders. Again, our instant replays tonight brought to you by Carry Insurance and Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. Third and nine. Dropping back to pass once again, Stoller. Stoller's going to take off and run as he puts that in his left hand. He's going to get out of bounds. Stoller it appears to be shy of the first down. Finally and now, can in that no man's land partner, fourth down. I was going to go for it here. Yeah, I think Coach Holden's going to like to go for it here on fourth and five. At least appear as if you're going to, right? Get on the line of scrimmage. See if there's something that you like on how they align. You could always draw them off. Five-yard scramble. They're going to go for it. And they're going to come up short in the first two for Crestview to lay the wood. Bryson Penix and Isaac Klein. Yeah, watch Penix come backside A. The center steps, plays side. He reads it, playing that inside linebacker position. Reads it effectively. Boys, he fired up huge play to stop the fourth down by Wayne Trace. It's a loss of downs. Turn the ball back over to Crestview as the Knights have it. See seven and a half minutes left to go for a Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Take over from their own 35-yard line. Yeah, both teams with the initial jab on that offensive possession, right? Got the defense on the heels early, but the defense each time has kind of risen to the challenge. It's been fun so far. Hunter getting everyone set. See a man going in motion. Single receiver each way. What well, looks like uh, an H-back lined up to the left side. Run's going to go that way, squirting through the line. Is Isaac Klein, he's going to get a good gain on first down out across the 40. A good patient run right here by Klein. Sees the trap block. Does exactly what you're supposed to do. Reith gets the kick out block on the trap, cut inside the trap. But he's got some quickness, right? Put that left foot in the ground and get vertical in a hurry. Gain of eight is going to bring him second and two from the 43-yard line. Crestview appears to not be in as much of a hurry offensively as Wayne Trace is. Crestview's dominated this series lately. They've won seven in a row. Give to the man in motion, trying to stretch this play out. Finally cutting up field at the 45-yard line. Will be Kellen Putnam, and it looks like he's going to have a first down. Now he gets the first down because Sheets, number 14. Boys, he deliver a crack block. Comes down from the outside receiver position and just walls it off in a big way. If you're a defender and the corner sees the uh, receiver cracking down on you, they're supposed to yell crack. If not, you're going to have some hurt ribs. 
Uh, That's when you go back to the defensive huddle and say to your corner, did you not see him come down to crack me? Please yell it out. That hurts. It's a first down from the 47. Crestview on the initial possession got to the Wayne Trace 38 and then were pushed backwards thanks to a penalty plus uh, long play. Here's a long play, middle of the field. This Our one's going to be hauled in to as a floater out to uh, Red Sheets is able to haul that one in. Yeah, watch Sheets. He, he just had a big play on a run game a moment ago, but you got to love the height. Big fell goes up, but boys, he take a hit in a big way as Tucker Antoine had delivered a shoulder. And Sheets is down on the ground. Yeah, while they take a look at the injured player, we'll take a timeout here. Crestview driving halfway through this opening quarter. So big 20-yard reception, but however, looks like uh, Ren Sheets kind of paying the price for it, and that pass over the middle of the field took a big hit. Miles still down. Well, if Sheets isn't able to go, that's going to be a huge loss for this offense because he's that guy that you can just throw it up to, right? He's got that huge height advantage. You're going to see it right here. 6'6". Six, six. Ouija Thompson-esque if you're an old Steeler fan and the shoulder pad right there. I don't think it was anything malicious, just kind of in the wrong spot, wrong time. Tucker Antoine delivers a hit like you're supposed to as a defensive back. Yeah, yeah good sight to see high. that uh, Red's able to get up on his own power. That's great sign. And he is going to uh, spend a little bit of time on a sideline. Connection between Hunter and Sheets. But is able to walk this off. Nice first yeah, it looks like he's going to be okay. Yard line. Well, he, just, he took a big lick, just a little shaken up. Huge advantage when you have a receiver that big. Uh, remember Calvin Johnson for the Lions, that guy Megatron, he was huge. Uh, remember Plaxico Burris at Michigan State and for the Steelers and the Giants, six foot five guy. Big receivers always liked when I coach because you could throw the fade to him and you have that advantage. So Crestview will uh, continue to drive now. Ren Sheets has made it to the sideline. First and 10 at the Wayne Trace, 33. Second drive of the night, second time in Raider territory. And backers are creeping, showing blitz for Wayne Trace. Hunter with the handoff going to the left side, back to Isaac Klein. Klein trying to stretch this out, and it looks like he'll get near the 30-yard line. Yeah, watch Klein, all right? He's going to press B gap right here, and then going to dipsy do outside just quick enough to make the first guy miss, but gets you positive yardage. That's some nice feet, some good footwork right there to get some positive yardage. Blake Stoller almost made a tackle for loss. Blake Stoller, number 88 for Wayne Trace, having an early good showing in this football game. Second and seven now from the 30-yard line. Near the five-minute mark left to go on our Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. This time trying to go to the right side, knifing up inside is Klein, and he'll get uh, maybe a Klein yard. Tries to cut it back. Uh, inside it's zone again, has a little cutback. I think you're in a four down situation in territory team. right here. Don't be surprised if this is a rollout pass, get Hunter six. on the perimeter. Third and six from the 29 yard line. Sixth play of the drive coming up here for Crestview. Started back at their own 35 yard line. Hunter in a shotgun fires. That one went through the hands of one. It's going to be ruled incomplete on the sideline as Kellen Putnam ended up coming up with a catch here. Well, he shows you everybody ran the proper depth, right? <laughs> goes through the first hands, goes out through the second hands, almost a catch on the outside. That was Putnam, who had that huge catch early in this football game, not able to come up with it. Fourth down, though, I think you go for it here. Yeah, I believe so. You did see the ball pop loose there at the end of that play. Good call by the officials. Fourth and six. Yeah, quads to the left with a bunch inside. Hunter quickly gets rid of the football. Get it out to that left side, and it looks like on second effort, Bryson Penix is going to have a first down. they yeah, got to give the Crestview staff credit because they went quick. They went quads to the left with a bunch inside. Didn't allow Wayne Trace to recognize and get set up. Just threw a quick little screen out to Penix. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy for a first down for Crestview. He goes for 10. It's a fresh set of downs as we near the four minute mark in a quick moving opening quarter. Hunter in a shotgun. 
fakes the handoff, wants to come to the near side, fires, and this one's gonna be caught inside the 10 yard line as Bo Eggleston comes up with a big catch. Eggleston's gonna work all the way across the formation as Hunter rolls to the right. Boy, has he just dropped the three quarters and throw a rope out there. Pretty good coverage by Antoine as well, but a fantastic throw by Hunter. And Eggleston listed as a tight end, 6'3", 190, 11 yards. It's a first and goal from the eight yard line. That's just one of those plays, it's too tough to get upset with Antoine, right? Good coverage, just a better throw. Handoff comes to the right side once again, and a good job Line coming up, getting a stop as Ezra Sin Ezra might have Sin. saved a touchdown there. Ezra Sin G. comes G. all the way from inside, gets out, bites the, the ankles, six. or else that would have been a touchdown. Ezra Sin, second time in this football game, he's made a big play for Wayne Trace on defense. Second and goal coming up from the six yard line, 10th play of the drive now for Crestview. And they're still working on sheets here on the sideline. He just got a high five from the trainer. It's usually a good sign that he's gonna go back in the game. Yeah, gave a thumbs up, saw the trainer give the thumbs up to I assume one of the coaches. Looking to throw, fires, end zone, and incomplete. Trying to come up with a one-handed grab as Isaac Klein. Take a look at the carry insurance replay. Oh, you're going to see a little out move then back inside. The rule is never let a receiver cross your face on the goal line. Can't score on a slant if you do that. Guess by Winans. Great route. Just an errant throw that time by Hunter. Third and goal from the six-yard line. Two back set usually indicates run. Hunter rolling out. Fires. And that one's going to be incomplete. Good defensive job by Derek Dangler. Yeah, Dangler, smart move, right? Uses the sideline as an extra defender. Pushes all the way out. Putnam has no more room. Fantastic work of understanding where you're at on the field. Or else that would have been a touchdown for Crestview. So fourth down and goal from the six-yard line. Yeah, one of the problems that you, you have, you right, when you're a spread six, team, right, so go when the field it. shrinks, on, yep. you don't have that power ability at times, but they're going to go. Carson Hunter in a shotgun, fourth down, swings this out, pass is caught now, can he fight his way in? Trying to get in is Isaac Klein, and it looks like he's going to be shy of the goal line. Yeah, tackle's going to be made by Sin. He's coming on a blitz, and he's going to stop. Watch the hustle by Sin come all the way at Winans, pushes him back in. Then Sin's going to run, 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 get in involved on the tackle. That is railing to the football in a big way. Boy, that is great defense. Matt Holden, head coach, defensive coordinator for Wayne Trace. He's got to be excited about that, Stan. So each team with a loss at downs, Wayne Trace will get it back, and they'll start from their own three-yard line. But most importantly, they've kept Crestview off the scoreboard. Now Stoller looking to throw, first and goal. That one's going to be incomplete. Firing into coverage in the middle of the field. Good coverage there by, I believe, is that 32, Stoller's Braxton Leith? They're trying to get Hildebrand, big tight end type, one-on-one -on -one in the middle. Stoller, who his delivery reminds me of a, a kind of an old Cleveland Browns uh, quarterback. I remember Bernie Kosar, right? A little three-quarter action, very similar look. Second and 10, they'll run out of this one, give themselves a little bit of running room. In fact, he wears that same 19 that Bernie used to wear. Now, I guarantee this, Dollar could beat Bernie in a race. Bernie was one of the slowest quarterbacks in the history of the NFL. Gain of three on the run is going to bring up a third and seven out to the six yard line. Stoller looking to throw, trying to step up under pressure. He's trying to stay afloat. He's going to get rid of the football. And looking for a flag, and I don't know if we have one yet. Well, if you watch the Raiders play basketball and say, who's that big guy rebounding all the time, physical inside? Well, it's Mr. Stoller. Watch him just throw off guys to stay alive and then throws it, gets rid of her, also would have been a safety. That is some serious strength because Garrett Yinger is a strong dude, and he was hanging all over Mr. Stoller. The Raiders will punt out of their own end zone. Sidewinder, that one will be fielded from the 42, and the flag's going to come in Ball's here. Out. Ball's out. Ball's out. 
As everyone in Wayne Trace says they have it. Coming out from the pile with the football is Kyle Forer. And we'll see what the word is here as we take a look at the replay. Yeah, first rule, you got to catch the ball on a punt return. Second one, make the first guy miss. Third one, hold on to it. But it is stripped out. Great work by Jude Stoller to get it on the ground. And then picked up. Huge play, huge shift in field position if it's going to stay with Wayne Trace after the penalty. Yeah, the officials kind of looking over to the Wayne Trace sideline, so you'd assume the penalty is going to be on Crestview, which they will, uh, they being Wayne Trace, will happily decline to take the turnover, and the Raiders will get the football. The hey, Kyle Forer, great job hustling down, down on the punt, right? Mm -hmm. And then more importantly, after he got the turnover, got up, held the ball up in the air, right? Hey, I'm a lineman. I got to touch the ball. Everybody look at me. I got that fumble. Great job, Kyle Forer. Raiders move out to their own 41-yard line. Stoller looking to throw on first down. Fires this one middle of the field. That one's going to be over the head of everyone and incomplete. I believe Tucker Antoine looking for uh, well, he's looking for a penalty. He's kind of reached out to the official. I like the concept. Wayne Trace trying to get some one-on-one -on, -one on a safety. Had a four-high looked look that Crestview gave them. It's going to be one-on-one -on -one with four receivers. Go to the post, but. Stoller, he has got some serious gas in that arm. He has thrown it. See what he does here on second down. He'll fake it, kind of rolls to the near side. Again, he's able to shake off one defender. And he's going to take a big oh, hit as he's taking Parker Spieth head on. We take a look at our carry insurance replay. That's the old play that they're going to get a quick little out off the inside fake action. Something that Tom Herman used to run at Ohio State, took it down to Texas when he was the head coach there. A lot of teams in Ohio use it, but it was read well by Crestview. So third and eight coming up here for Wayne Trace, trying to take advantage of the turnover. Again, that spread set with a back behind Stoller. Stoller looking to throw. Under pressure, steps up, looking to run, and he's going to take a big hit from behind as he goes down near the line of scrimmage. One of those players, Ren Sheets, good to see him back in the ball game. Yeah, Sheets and Yinger are going to combine right here. It was a little zone blitz concept. Dropped the nose as they brought Penix on a blitz. Gave a four-man look, but only rushed three. Kind of confused Stoller. And Stoller early in this football game, he has taken some serious hits. No gain on the play, fourth and eight, and the Raider punt team back out onto the field. As this one sent high into the air by Dangler, and this one's going to take a big Raider bounce, and finally will be touched down just outside the 20-yard line. And that's why you want to come up and catch it, right? Usually when it hits the ground, it's going to cost you some yardage. Cost Crestview about eight yards that time. So the Knights with 10 seconds to go in the quarter will have it at their Which own 21. The We've had a lot of stuff going on in this game already. Just not a lot of points, right? It's been very entertaining. Just not a lot of scoring. Both teams rising to the occasion to make a big play after the opponent made a big play. The Knights able to uh, hold after the turnover on the punt. See if they go back to that outside zone. They had a little bit of success early in this game with just reading the block and then cutting back inside. Hey Carson, uh, Hunter in a shotgun shovel pass comes to the near sideline, breaking free. Bryson Penix. Penix will get out to the 30. So it is a first down as the opening quarter will come to a close. Neat little slide of hand right there. Fake it one way, come back the other way. But how about the hustle of Wayne Trace inside? Is Tucker Antoine getting out there again? And a big thump delivered. It's been a physical football game so far. A one quarter of the books, no score between Crestview and Wayne Trace. It's a good run on the last play of the quarter. We'll give Crestview first down at their 31. No score between the Knights and Raiders. One quarter in the books on our Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Turned out to be a really nice night for football. Great crowd, both sides. Beautiful skies. Got a 
great backdrop of windmill after windmill. You're just enamored by them coming out here for practice <laughs> earlier this week. First down, here's a quick throw as Hunter is backpedaling and it's gonna one hop is intended target. Yeah, Winans comes from the outside spot. Number four for Wayne Trace. It's that empty look. Four receiver bring the motion across. You know it's gonna be quarterback run or quick throw. Winans all top in the face of Hunter. Second down from their own 31 yard line. Gotta really like the linebacker quickness of Wayne Trace. They can really run. Sin gets absolutely everywhere on the field. Spread look once again out of the Knights, and now we will have a flag. It looks like Ryan's someone might have taken a step too early. Now Hunter having an animated conversation well on the Knights, it's with the offensive line. 15. I'm wondering if he called for it to be snapped. And it's a miscommunication. Ludwig looked back at him like, I didn't know you wanted me to snap it. Isn't isn't the clap like the universal sign of the? It, it's become one of those things, but a lot of teams use it as a dummy signal now and go back to the verbal call. So the five-yard walk-off will make it second and 15. Just got a one-handed throw. That one's going to be hauled in. Nice catch, Eggleston. Yeah, Bo Eggleston is going to be a clear out on that side, and he's just going to settle up. Cole Pretty good hand. move by Carson Hunter to get himself a little bit extra time in the pocket. This is a slight little four. move and wings it out there. He's got a lot of guys on the, in his receiving core that can really go up and get the football. It's 11 yards on the completion, and it's a third and somewhat manageable. Third and a long four. It's the Raider, or I'm sorry, the Knights need to get just across the 40-yard line. Handoff going back on the ground. Isaac Klein. Klein, that stretch play. Going to break free as he's going to have a first down near midfield. This is exactly what Crestview wants to do. He's going to press outside. The edge gets sealed. In fact, they just take him all the way out past D gap. Gives him a little C gap run. Some daylight. Just keep on getting vertical until you get to first down. First down for the Knights in the 49. Again, our title sponsor for the Knights broadcast between Crestview and Waytrace is the State Bank. Invest in Northwest and West Central Ohio. Skilled objective and caring financial planners. First down from the 49 as they'll try to get in the midfield. Mixing it up here as this time they go to Braxton Leaf. Leaf the ball carrier. And Leaf with nowhere to go on first down. If fortunate, get back to the line of scrimmages. Nate Osborne for Wayne Trace. Got all kinds of penetration, blew it up, and there's a yellow flag down. We're going to see exactly what transpired. I'm going to guess maybe Crestview wasn't set. That's at the line of scrimmage also, right about where Leith was tackled. So we're going to get a defensive shot block. Hmm. And not a call you see often on the defensive side. You see in the NFL, when uh, defensive linemen try to chop out offensive linemen getting up to second level, but that is a big one. That'll Goes from a big play at the line the of scrimmage for no, gar no yards to all of a sudden free 15 in this Crestview offense. Great starting position on first down now. We have the Wayne Trace 36 following the 15 yard penalty. Man goes in motion, try to run that way now, cutting back in. Not a whole lot of running room there in the middle of the field. Yeah, much better job. And you can see Sin again. He is responsible. If he's the backside linebacker of taking away cut, he'll jump to A gap to make sure that that running back can't cut back. He is there to make the tackle and does a good job again. Gain of one is going to set up second and nine from the 35. Off coverage, now jumping into a cover four look. Back to cover three, rolling up. Hunter has a man coming at him, and this one's going to be incomplete. Pass as running right at the quarterback, incomplete. uncumbered Ezra Sin. Ezra Sin has showed out tonight in a big way. Has a big tackle on the last down. 
has a couple big tackles already in this football game. That time applies pressure in the face of Carson Hunter before Hunter can make a decision on where he wants to throw it. So third and nine for Crestview at the Wayne Trace 35. Surprisingly, no score on our Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. You see 9.38 left to go before halftime. There's that four receiver set with the bunch that they've featured on third down. Quick throw, this one comes to Putnam. Putnam trying to break free and not a whole lot of running room there. And I believe was that number 12, Cole Moorhead had hopped out there. It was Antoine, number 13, it comes makes the tackle, but yeah, it's because of his buddy forcing it back inside. And that was one of our themes tonight, right? One of our checks, if you will, force everything back inside, spill it back in where Antoine can make the tackle. Again, our instant replays tonight brought to you by Carey Insurance and Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. Fourth down, Wayne Trace trying to get another stop as Crestview stays on the field. Hunter looking for it all on fourth down. He's going to overthrow everyone, and it's incomplete. And another big stop by the Wayne Trace defense. Yeah, a little miscommunication. Putnam comes inside the corner. And the throw by Hunter is outside towards the pylon. Either Hunter read it wrong or Putnam read it wrong. But great stand again, as you said, partner. Wayne Trace delivers again on the fourth down. Second time, their defense has held Crestview on fourth down. They'll take over from their own 33-yard line. Just under nine minutes to go before halftime. Surprisingly low scoring game. Well, psychologically, it's got to really affect Crestview, right? They've been scoring in bunches. They've had a lot of offensive success, and they're kind of scuffling right now. Handoff here on first down out of the pistol. Big gang tackle, just nowhere to go for Kyle Slade. Yeah, it's Ren Sheets who just settles down at the line of scrimmage, lets things come to him. He was out of the game earlier, got dinged up, but he is back in. You see he's 100% healthy, makes a big play there. No gain on the run, he's gonna bring up second and 10. Good shot there, the uh, Wayne Trace sideline. You see how the coaches with, a couple coaches with a hat backwards, right? Every staff has to have a couple back hat coaches wearing a hat backwards. It's the cool way to do it now. Trouble on the snap, handoff still be completed, just not a whole lot of running room. Ren Sheets kind of leading the charge there on defense once again. Kyle Slade having some trouble finding some running room. And never a good thing when you get tackled and you look back and all your offensive linemen are looking back at you. That means there was a lot of missed blocks. <laughs> look at all the white jerseys looking back. Hey, who's tackling our running back? Well, it's my guy because I didn't block him. Gain of one on the run. It's third and nine. As they stay in that spread look, Stoller trying to step up, and Sheets is going to slam him down. Now what a defensive series by Ren Sheets. Two tackles and then the big sack. He's just going to keep working. It's really a two-man pressure, dropping nine in coverage. One guy reading the quarterback. And just eventually they get to him because he keeps working. That's good work by Sheets. Not a great pass rush move initially, but just keeps keeps moving his feet. Well, Don't want to criticize the kid. Bad German suplex. <laughs> he should want belly to back, right? Punt underway. And once again, this is going to take a Wayne Trace bounce. And then inadvertently hit one of the up men, kind of waiting for it to stop bouncing. I'm sure the last thing, and I believe that was uh, number eight, Dylan Hildebrand. Last thing he wanted was to touch the football right there, but it kind of caught him. Still a pretty good punt. Well, a smart move, though. After it initially hit him, what his teammates do? They went and picked it up, right? Because if Crestview Excuse wanted to pick it up and run and they fumbled the football, it wouldn't have mattered. It would have went back to them because the ball had been already touched by Wayne Trace. Knights fan, that was a big max sack by number 14, Ren Sheets. Crestview will have it under seven minutes to go before we get to halftime. Start this drive, I believe, from their own 34. Looking to throw on first down, they'll come to the near sideline. Good pass out to Bo Eggleston. 
Fake inside to get the linebackers to jump a little bit, and it gives Eggleston just a little bit of room to get around the linebackers. You see he's able to navigate there before he's knocked out of bounds. That's Ray Price that knocked him out. Wayne Trace linebackers, they are really cognizant of inside run. Play action worked that time because of it. Gain of five, it's gonna bring second and five. Handoff again, coming to the near sideline, going back to Bryson Penix. Penix get to the sideline. It looks like maybe about a yard or two on the run. Nikhil Winans coming off number four. He's got a blown tire, got to get a new cleat put back on that foot. But not before he made the tackle, setting up this third down. So it will be a gain of one on the run. Third and four from the 40 yard line. Gets out of bounds. So on our Lodix Jewelry scoreboard, clock stops. He's 6.37 to go before we get to halftime. And now whistles. And looks like some more trouble. An equipment issue for Parker Spieth. It looks like he'll have to come out and get something fixed. So Crestview will send number 200 Jones in this place. Yeah, I think his mouthpiece fell out onto the grass and the official wanted him to get it back in. Hunter rolling out and that one nearly intercepted is stepping up. Derek Dangler nearly jumping in front of that one. Now take a look at Nate Osborne. He's gonna get into the That's face right there. Forced the throw quickly. And kind of fortunate though for Crestview. It looked like it might have been picked off if it was thrown on time as Derek Dangler was on the prowl in that quick out. Can't say enough about this Wayne Tra De Trace defense. They are flying around the field, making things difficult for Crestview. Fourth down, sends a punt, good punt. That one is gonna back up to about the 20 yard line. Trying to bounce to the outside is Tucker Antoine. He's gonna take a big hit on the return. Boy, talk about a big hit. Number nine, Landon Foltz for Wayne Trace. He went hunting on that return. Nobody was looking for him, and he just dialed up a Crestview black jersey and absolutely pancaked him on a peelback block. Fantastic. Wayne Trace will get it here. Nearing the halfway mark of the second quarter. That's one of those that tomorrow in film, they'll roll it back a couple times because they want to see that decleater. Great block. Raiders from their own 28 in a surprisingly scoreless game. Someone might catch the eye of a few people around the area. Handoff on first down. Good run. Going to Kyle Slade, and Slade's going to be close to first down yardage. This is really when the run game for Wayne Trace has been at its best, right? They go quick. And they catch that Crestview defense not getting settled. And here they are going back again. Pick a bait in the run. It's going to bring him second and two back to Slade. Hand their trouble on the handoff. There's one black jersey in on there. As we're going to wait, and the officials are going to say. Second time in this game, Kyle Forrest come up with a big recovery. First on a punt, and then this hustling back. He somehow leaped over Ren Sheets to come up with that because he was in great position to get that. Yeah, Sheets might have been able to pick it up and stroll it into the end zone. Loss of three on the play, so it was second and two, now third and five. And Wayne Trace, guilty of eight turnovers so far through two, game, two games, dodges a bullet there, and they're gonna be in fourth down territory as Stoller's gonna be tracked down by the young man we've talked quite a bit about tonight. Now watch Sheets, he's gonna keep working. Great job just using his hands, arm over, goes through the tackle and a running back, and then folds. Folds Kyle Stoller down to the ground. Great work by Sheets. Relentless at defensive end. No gain on the play. Back deep for the Knights, number two, Hunter Jones, and number 24, Mason Speed. For the fourth time tonight, Wayne Trace has gone three and out. One of those, the punt was fumbled. This punt is going to take a backwards bounce, still rolling. And finally, someone from Wayne Trace will down it at the 45. Kind of weird shot right there. How many golfers would love that one, right? Put it past the pin, let it roll back. Not if you're the punt team, though. It costs themselves about 12 yards. 
Crestview, really good field position. Their own 45, 421 to go under Lodding's Jewelry scoreboard yes. in our opening half. At some point in time, someone's going to blink, right? Mike Tomlin always says, don't blink. Don't be the team that blinks. Somebody's going to blink in this football game. Well, we saw that first that big pass play on first down on the first play of the game. Crestview mm -hmm. was moving, and then it got backed up. We've seen a couple of plays where are just kind of waiting for someone. The big stop inside the uh, five-yard line. One thing we haven't seen is a touchdown. I'm sure the Leland Smith Insurance Services would love to see a touchdown. Handoff on first down, back to Isaac Klein. Klein will get out across the 45, maybe the 46. And Preston Kreischer, number 65, tries to lead the way on a pull. Get away, a little bit away from the inside-outside zone scheme that they love to run. Try to run a little down and then kick action. Wayne Trace seemingly been ready for every type of run scheme that Crespi wants to run. Second and nine. Run a lot out of this pistol look. They'll do once again. Good job waiting for his blocks to form as Isaac Klein. Klein's going to take a big hit at the end of this play. He sure does. And that big hit is going to be Caleb Mosier. Coming across, plays that backside linebacker spot, and Sin gets him by the ankle. Sin's got to have almost eight to nine tackles already tonight. Crestview now into Wayne Trace territory at the 49-yard line. Sets up a third and four as we get near three to go in our opening half. Hunter looks to throw, and this one is going to be incomplete again, just a touch too high. Now take a look at it, the ankles, right? His feet. He never gets his feet pointed in the right direction. That left ankle is heavily taped, doesn't want to put some pressure on it. You kind of see his body, his lower half, not really twisted into the throw. You throw all arm, you drop the elbow, the ball will sail, and that's what happened that time. Punt team coming back on for the Knights. Raiders number 13, Tucker Antoine. Tucker Antoine stands, looks like at about his 10-yard line. As Dangler will kind of run into this one. It's going to take a bounce. First, it looked like Antoine was going to field it. Now, the officials are going to say that's going to go off Antoine, and Crestview is going to be set up in great field position. Well, we were wondering who was going to blink. This is a big moment in this football game. Oh, it does touch him right there. Great work. Always wonder why you're on the football if you're not going to return it right. Get away, get away, get away. Tremendous work by the special teams of Crestview. Coming up with another big play. That has got to be exciting for Colton Royer, the special teams coach for Crestview. His guys well-schooled on that fundamental. Just a fortuitous bounce that comes up and looked like got Antoine in the foot or maybe the leg. Just grazed him, though. It was enough. And it's going to be first and goal from right at the 10-yard line. And I'll see if Wayne Trace can rise to the occasion again defensively. Hunter in a shotgun, looking to throw. Fakes, going to roll out, fires this one towards the corner of the end zone. He's going to throw that one away, and it's going to be incomplete. Yeah, very fortunate for Crestview that that wasn't a holding penalty. You're going to see it right out. Oh, we're going to go back to the punt return. You're going to see the ball just kind of take a little bit of a... Tip right there, football tip, got him right on his shin. Smart play to recover it by Spieth. Second and goal following the incomplete pass from the 10 yard line. This could be the opportunity Crestview was looking for. A little surprised the first play selection was a, a fade. They ran a quick screen to the left last time out of this formation. Carson Hunter sends a man in motion. He'll give the handoff to him, trying that jet sweep, going to the outside, and Penix. Penix, not a whole lot of running room. Yeah, see, if you're a spread formation team and you have no tight end in the game and you're going to run jet sweep against a 3-5 team, you're just running it into an outside linebacker that no one's accounting for. So all he has to do is just read it and fly up and make the tackle. There's no one to block him. So it's right, easy move for that Wayne Trace defense to come up and make the tackle on Penix. You're, ho you're hoping Penix can make a one-on-one -on -one move to score. Gain it two on the run. It's going to bring him third and goal from the eight-yard line. Crestview trying to break the scoreless tie late in our opening half. 
Here's one kind of floated out for Penix, but that's going to be read well as there's about five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine defenders surrounding him. That's rallying to the football. First rule on defense, you run to the ball. Watch Dylan Dyson Scott come inside right there on the bubble. Gets the first contact on Penix, and guess who else is there? Number 23, Sin, all over the football field tonight. Loss of one on the pass play, fourth and goal from the nine. Make that a loss of one on that play. He's going to bring up fourth and goal from the nine. Got to throw this into the end zone here. Don't throw it short. Come all the way down here, not at least throw it into the end zone on a fourth down. And I think Crestview is going to have to call a timeout as the play clock is dwindling down to two. So timeout on the field. We'll take one as well. Big fourth and goal play coming up for Crestview when we return. Fourth down and goal coming up here for Crestview. The Their offensive players. guys having a conversation. Yeah, Coach, I like this field. in the huddle. All right, we got the right 11 we want in the field. Let's send them out there. Well, you, you always you always have a guy on the other sideline watching who the head coach talks to the most, right? Remember you last year we were at Napoleon and Defiance, and they spent a lot of time talking to Williams, and they came out and ran the jet sweep to him, mm -hmm. and Defiance had blown it up. You always Thank keep an eye on who's the most important guy the head coach has spent time with. A lot of times give you the clue on who's going to get the football. So here we go. We've had our uh, share of big plays, and now we're going to change it up and send the field goal unit out. So Hayden Parrott will come on to attempt a about a 25-yard field goal. But before that, it looks like Wayne Trace will take a timeout Wait, here. You, so. you have to ice the kicker, right? Mm -hmm. That is the rule. So Crestview just looking for points here, Miles. They're having some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, first one to score might win this football game. What we thought was going to be a high-powered affair has kind of turned into a rock fight, right? Yeah, one of the things that you call timeout for when the team comes out for a field goal is you want to make sure you're lined up special teams-wise. Stay off the kicker, come after it from a spot. You don't see many field goals at this level, so make sure that you get your guys in the right spot. You might be able to get a block right here. So Matt Holden, good good timeout right there. Plus that kicker, now he's got to think a little bit more, right? Yep. Hey, the free WOSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, and more scores than WOSN. Search WOSN in the App Store or Android Play Store. Man, that's one of the first things we do after our game, isn't it? We get on there, check all the area scores. About what I do at halftime each and every night we're out. Here's Hayden Parrott, freshman kicker, on to attempt 25-yard field goal. Good snap. Kick is... No good. Going to go left. We'll see if maybe someone got a hand on that one, Miles. I think he just kind of mishit it. Hit the side of the football line, drive it. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes you just go get a clean kick on it. Like the decision, though, because how many fourth down and nine type of plays do you have on the goal line? See if you can get some free three points and go into halftime happy, but... If you're Wayne Trace here, buddy, do you, you kind of be happy going in tied? Or you want to see if you can make some hay here on this drive? You got two timeouts with 117 left. What would you do? Does the first play kind of you kind of run, and if you spring one for good yardage, then you kind of move, and if you don't, like, all right, well, we'll regroup here. That's it will be Crestview ball to begin the second half, by the way. See what Wayne Trace will do. They're going to... Sweep this one to the near sideline on first down, a big hit. As you heard Miles there, Tucker Antoine's going to take a big lick. <laughs> Tucker Antoine says, Coach, I love jet sweep. Coach, I love jet sweep. Coach, I hate jet sweep right there. Hello, what a hit by Ludwig. Gain of three. He's going to bring up second and seven. Wing Trace doesn't be in a big hurry. Do come near the sideline. Pass is going to be caught well short of the first down. It's going to be a minimal gain of a couple. And now if you're Crestview, to you use a timeout? You have two. They're going to let the clock run. Just kind of a little pivot move. Easy throw for your quarterback. Try to get him a while working well. That's Leith that makes the tackle. That was uh, Dylan Hildebrand to battle all the way down to the ground to hold on to that football. Looking to throw. This one's going to come out. And pass is going to be caught. 
At the 30, it looks like about a yard Number shy. 13, and now Crestview is going to use the timeout here with 16 seconds to go. Hmm, both teams trying to figure out what they wanted to do with the time before this half. Curious with the market. fact that bring up fourth and one for the they went so quick on third down. I thought Wayne Trace, since he were third down and six, you kind of let the clock Press run, the right? The yeah. yeah, but they hurry up and went quick. Now you're at fourth you and one, and the bad thing about fourth and one is if you're Matt Holden in your head sports. at some point in time, you're saying, hmm, we can go for this, right? Fourth and one, pick this up. Don't do it. Don't do it, Coach Holden. Punt the football here. If you're Crestview, though, load up. Come after this punt, don't you? You let the punter kind of run around, run a few seconds off. Not me. I just was happy to get it off. Let him punt the football and cover. They get the ball at the 40, and they throw it 60 yards to beat us before half. Well, that's different. Hey, check out our website, WOSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN. TV. It's usually what I have to do because I don't remember where we're going Number week five, to week. Derek I believe Bainer, next week Miles and I are in NWOAL country as uh, the heavyweights of the league kind of do battle first couple, three weeks of the league slate. I believe it's Liberty Center and Wasion. Bad snap on the punt. They're going to have to run to try to get the first down of fourth and one, and they're going to come away with a first down. As Dangler is going to have a little bit of running room. That one kind of one-hopped him. He's out of bounds with eight seconds to go, and a heads-up play will keep Wayne Trace from giving the ball over Crestview deep in their territory. That was a wild fake punt, wasn't it? <laughs> Great call, Coach Holden, on the fake punt. No, it was better play by Dangler, who didn't panic on the bad snap, corralled it, and it looked like Crestview had their return set up, so there wasn't any pressure on him. So you've essentially given yourself a shot at one play here from the 32-yard line. See what they do with eight seconds to go. Stoller's going to lose the football. And it looks like all Crestview can do is fall on it as the half will come to a close. Well, very fortunate that this ball wasn't picked up. Watch Stoller. Hold it, hold it, hold it. He's going to leave the pocket. But working all the way back. Getting that ball free is Bo Eggleston. Look who falls on it. Yeah, pick it up and run, right? Sheets had a chance to pick it up, but you always tell guys to fall on it. Unfortunately, the clock runs out. Boy, this has been a jab and overhand right type of first half. So scoreless at the half between the Raiders and the Knights. We'll take a timeout. We'll have more for you after this on WOSN. Hey, Raider Robert Smiles Holiday back with you here at the half from uh, Crestview Knights Field. Gorgeous look at the sky. Gorgeous look. A couple of goose eggs on the scoreboard, Miles. Nothing, nothing at the half. It looks like a Bob Ross painting, doesn't it? Look at that. Look at the red, the fire red, and the purple in there. It's, it's beautiful, Randy. Absolutely gorgeous. I wish I could get that on velvet. 0-0 zero, zero, Crestview and Wayne Trace. I was trying to find the correct way to transition that into football, and I'm... <laughs> Coming up empty. Well, the defenses have painted a pretty picture so I guess. far. How about that? We'll go with that. Uh, can you say about that uh, opening half, but just the missed opportunities. As I take a look at my drive chart, Wayne Trace, after forcing Crestview punt, gets to the 35, fourth down, goes for it, loses it. Crestview drives down inside the five to the three. Loss of downs, another loss of downs. Crestview late in the early second quarter. You had the punt that was fumbled. We thought Crestview was able to stick that in. They couldn't get it done. Missed field goal, so on, so forth. And what it leads to is what you see there on your screen. Zero a zero. It's been an exciting game though. A lot of stuff has transpired. It's not a zero zero, nothing's going on type of game. But it, Crestview, if they lose this football game, they're, they're going to go back to how many missed opportunities they had, right? Wayne Trace wins this football game. It's going to have to be an event. I just don't see them being able to put together a 60, 70-yard drive. They are struggling offensively still. Sometimes they run the football, can't get the passing game going correctly. So Crestview's got a little bit of a better chance. Wayne Trace is going to need some kind of event, a scoop and score, an interception, a punt return, something for them to score tonight. We might just have one of those old-fashioned 6 nothing football games at well, the end of this. Like Miles had uh, said to me at the half, the, the one group, the one company upset, 0-0, zero, zero, is the Leland Smith Insurance Services. They are our touchdown sponsor and haven't been mentioned a whole lot with the 0-0. Zero, zero. So I want to tell you that when we do get a touchdown, and hopefully it will come, 
It is sponsored by Leland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for all of your insurance needs. Sit up there in the right-hand corner. Yeah, that's what I was trying to point at you earlier, (laughs) and then you kind of fumbled, speaking of fumbles. So the LSI, it stands for what? Leland Smith Smith Insurance. Insurance. And they got a great commercial, too. I like that commercial, that guy on the side of the road. Fantastic commercial. Do want to tell you that our title sponsor for our broadcast tonight between Crestview and Wayne Trace is the State Bank. Invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. Now take a look right there. Isn't that great? That is a picture of number 61, Donovan Reith, and a happy mom saying, Go Knights. And that's not Donovan now. That, that was taken this morning, right? <laughs> yeah, that was at birth, right? That, that poor lady. I don't know how, but you now Donovan Reith. That's a, a picture when he was little, and they have a lot of fat, fat heads out here tonight. That Careful. Is, that, uh, well, I mean, that's what they they're holding oh, up. Oh, fat okay. heads. That's okay. what that is. Yeah, those big giant heads. How cute! Absolutely adorable. And there's old mom. She is proud as she can be. It's Crestview set to do the kicking to Wayne Trace as we are. Just about ready to begin the second half. What started as a bit of a warm evening. It's kind of cooled off. Got the new uh, announcer fall lineup gear. I might have to run out and grab some of it. <laughs> it is going to get soon uh, this year where it's going to get fall weather. Hoodie, sweatshirt, and jeans kind of nights coming up. And uh, your favorite type of year because you can get your pumpkin spice. You can. Get ready for it. So, worst kept secret in television, Randy Roberts, big pumpkin spice guy. Yeah, trash or cash on pumpkin spice, right? Oh! <laughs> Our friend Danny Holbrook with his famous trash or cash. I wonder if he's going to have pumpkin spice on his show. Let's see about that. Kick. 12 minutes put up on our lot of jewelers scoreboard to begin the second half. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt anything. Mm. I was just saying they're ready to kick it into that beautiful sky. It's getting prettier by the moment. Set to go. It's kind of one step line kick. Fielded at the 25 yard line. And there might be that big event that Miles was talking about. Here's a good return out to midfield. Yeah, it's Ray Price, a race price that carried the football. Race looks like a young man who needs to get the ball in his hands a little bit more often. 6'2", 210 pound receiver. He looked very comfortable carrying that pigskin. The Raiders will have it at midfield, and that's where we begin our second half. Well, let's see what that Wayne Trace brain trust has come up with. Matt Holden and his staff. Tyler Iwinski, the offensive coordinator for Wayne Trace. See if they can get some run game going, get Mr. Quarterback working hard. So that spread look out of the pistol with the back in the backfield behind Stoller. Drops straight back, trying to step up. Kind of slings that one sidearm. Receiver's going to fall down. He's looking for a flag here as we take a look at the carry insurance replay. Uh, it's the screen and go. And Stoller is going to rock it in here. Antoine gets knocked to the ground. The officials are going to say that was incidental coverage or uh, incidental contact on the coverage. Knocked down by Hunter Jones, number two in the secondary. So the incomplete pass will bring up second and ten from midfield. Just underway in our second half. Crestview trying to stay undefeated on the young season. Wayne Trace trying to go to two and one. Get the direct snap as they go to the wildcat look. Cole Moorhead running to the left side is going to pick up about five yards. And Moorhead just a direct snap to him, going to run it on along that left hand side. Run against that three man front that Crestview jumped down to. Give you a two man look standing up outside, and at the last minute, drop to a three point stance. Pinch it away, and early in this second half, this is a huge third down. Third and five coming up here for the Raiders. They'll go back to Moorhead once again. And it looks like he's going to have a first down as he's able to get inside the 40-yard line. Well, they like this so much on second down and long. They're going to run it again with Moorhead. Kind of an RPO look as they ran the bubble up top. Moorhead doesn't even look. He's just going to keep it and go. 
more yards for Moorhead. They'll pick up seven there, so it's a fresh set of downs from the 38-yard line. Our instant replays tonight brought to you by Carey Insurance in Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. And they're going to stay with Moorhead at quarterback. See what they do here out of this four receiver set. You see three there to the bottom side of your screen. He's going to throw out of this. Get it out to Tucker Antoine. And he's going to be to the near sideline inside the 35 yard line. Well, Moorhead has definitely delivered a spark. First with the direct snap runs, this time a quick throw outside. And for the first time all night, this Wayne Trade Trace offense finally has a little bit of rhythm. Pick up five of the play there. He's going to bring up second and five. As Wayne Trey's going with a different look with a new quarterback. I think there's anything physically wrong with Kyle Stoller. Now take a look down to the near side. They've got a big matchup down here. That is Ray Race Price down here. Jump ball situation if they want it. Five receivers set. They'll run out of it once again, sticking on the ground with Cole Moorhead. Moorhead's going to go fall forward to about 32, maybe the 33. And Crestview is going to have a problem as uh, Donovan Reith, number 61, make his way after the helmet popped off. So he'll have to sit out of play. Yeah, you see his head's a little bit different than the big head that we saw earlier at halftime with mom holding it in the air. But still a handsome fella. Third and four here from the 32-yard line. Rushing four, four down line look for Crestview. And it's going to be a run once again. Getting to the outside, down the sideline. He's going to have a first down as Wayne Trace has found something they like with Cole Moorhead. Yeah, Cole Moorhead, he is just going to outrun the linebacker to his side through B-gap. Eventually, Crestview is just going to have to take that away by blitzing that side out of that five receiver look because it's already the third time they've been victimized by it. Gain of 15 on the run. It's a first and 10 from the 17. Moorhead, kind of a little late putting the ball away. Saw in that last replay, Miles. Kind of a little ball fake when he gets past the line, looking to throw. Slings this one out, nearly intercepted. As Isaac Klein is trying to one hand that one. Watch Penix. He almost comes up with a tremendous play, running through the block, and goes with the left hand almost. Gets the interception working over top of Hildebrand. Dangerous, dangerous play for Wayne Trace. And finally, they're going to huddle. Second and 10 from the 17. As Wayne Trace will use this stoppage to get together. He'll fan out in that five receiver set once again. Moorhead, this time he's going to go to the right side. Cuts up field and he's going to fall forward inside the 15 Moorhead down to about the 14 yard line. Third and long 16. coming up here. Now, bad situation, though, because he ran towards Tussing and Sheets. It's going to set up third and seven. He's making a lot of yards to the left-hand side. That time ran into the teeth of that Crestview defense. Before Wayne Trace, as they take a look at my drive chart, deepest inside Crestview territory. They've been all night. Third and seven from the Crestview 14. Well, Moorhead seems to be that event that we talked about that they needed. Look to throw, and he's going to take off and run. Fakes out one defender, fighting for a first down. And it looks like he's going to have it. Watch Moorhead. He's going to drop back and take a look. Get some pressure in his face by Penix. Boy, he is quicker than a hiccup, isn't he? A little shift move to the right. Gets vertical for the first down. He has affected this game in a positive way for Wayne Trace. Picks up nine on the run. It's going to be first and goal from the five. Tenth play of the drive coming up here for the Raiders. Hey, why change, right? Stay empty. Longest drive they've had tonight. Moorhead again trying to bounce to the outside, looking for the end zone. He's going to get in for the Wayne Trace touchdown. That was nothing more than... Recess football right there, direct snap to Moorhead. Let him outrun absolutely everybody. Wayne Trace's offense has been dormant all night long. That's because Moorhead hasn't been carrying the rock. Moorhead, more yards, more points for Wayne Trace. 10 play, 50 yard touchdown drive 
ends with a five-yard run by Cole Moorhead. We take a look, carry insurance replay, beating his guys to that corner pylon. Yeah, Osborne at right guard got a good block for him, and then Hildebrand on the outside. Looks like they're going to set up going for two. And they'll come out with Moorhead once again. It's Cole Moorhead, sophomore quarterback. Oh, look at all the bodies in front of Moorhead here. Yeah, I don't shift, think they're set. Yeah, they're a shift out of it, and I don't believe everyone came to a stop, so we'll retry this. Ball start on the offense. The only thing I think they can stop Moorhead right now is if he gets tired. <laughs> He's carried the ball quite a bit on this drive. And Moorhead's job is to make sure everybody's set. If he's playing quarterback, he can't snap. He seemed could have put his hands on his knees there, right? A little bit tired. Keep that adrenaline pumping. We're going to stay in the same look. I'm just going to back him up five yards, so this try will be from about the eight-yard line. Moorhead rolls out. Is he going to throw? He is. He ends this one for the end zone. It's going to be one-handed, but out of bounds, looking, I believe, for Race Price, but the two-point conversion unsuccessful. Yeah, he has Price on a seven round right here if he lets it go. Just drifts a little too far. But watch the effort by Price. Unbelievable left hand. Tries to drag the right toe, but not enough territory. But we talked about 6 nothing. Here we are. So thanks to the Leland Smith touchdown by Cole Moorhead, it's 6 nothing on the Lodox Jewelry scoreboard. Wayne Trace in front. A 10-play, 50-yard scoring drive took 4.09 off the clock. Cole Moorhead scoring from five yards out has given Wayne Trace 6 nothing lead on our scoreboard tonight. Brought to you by Lodox Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler. For over 70 years, visit them in Coldwater or Van Wert or online at Lodix.com. Yeah, Cole Moorhead did not look like a sophomore on that drive, did he? Came in, made some veteran type plays. Maybe it's a, a, one of those situations where you throw him in, he's not ready for it, so he doesn't overthink it, right? If he's the starter and he's working all week and thinking about it, that's different, but he came in, just let his instincts take over. It's K.O. Winnens with the ball. Teed up at the 40 yard line, will step into this one. High short kick, that one's gonna hit. 25, takes a bounce near the 20 yard line for Kellen Putnam. Putnam trying to answer in one play and the great return is gonna set up Crestview in Wayne Trace territory. They're very fortunate that Landon Foltz makes this tackle. You're gonna see a great block to set up the wall right there. A little bit of creative blocking as well to get him free. As Aiden Martin that got him free. Almost a touchdown by Putnam, but great opening starting possession, field position to start to the second half. For Crestview. Crestview will start to the wing trace 43. This time they're going to go four receivers to the top side of your screen, one to the bottom. Carson Hunter in a shotgun. Now we'll see a man come back in the uh, look, going back to Klein out of the pistol as he gets back in the running back formation. He'll get the call there on first down. A right, good force back by Jude Stoller for Wayne Trace to force the run back inside, set the edge where his buddies could make the tackle. Gain of five on the run is going to bring up second and five from the 38 yard line. That'll bring up second and five for the Knights. Crestview trying to answer the Wayne Trey score. Scoreless through 24 minutes of football. Took all of four minutes to get our first score of the second half. Quick throw as they fan this one out to the near sideline. Coming back to Penix. Penix still trying to run through the pile. Flag's going to come in as that pile continues to move forward to the 30 yard line. Got to be excited if you're Crespi. Look at all the black jerseys trying to get extra blocks at the end of this play. Penix, he is a mule, runs right through, one arm tackle. I want to say, if they, they think they're going to call a face mask on that one. Let's see what the call is as they uncover. Still waiting for everyone to get unpiled. And now waiting for the call. If Crestview has a screen and go out of that formation, yeah, it's going to be the face mask. 
they have a screen and go out of that formation, they should run it now because every time they run that little bubble action out of that formation, Wayne Trace is absolutely flying up on it to try and stop the screen. The pass itself, one for eight, and they're gonna tack on five more to get to the 25-yard line where it's a fresh set of downs. Already halfway through this third quarter. This time it's Penix who will line up in the backfield. Pass this time will go to the far side. Long throw out to Eggleston who comes up with the catch. Good timing route. Eggleston on the quick out. Beats the inside defender. Throw it to the outside shoulder so it can be caught and get him turned up field. They go back to that same look. They got Spieth one-on-one -on -one to the near side on a post. Middle field was vacated. It'd be an easy touchdown. Gain of one to the 24-yard line brings up second and nine. A lot of work for one yard, wasn't it? We'll see four receivers coming down to the near side of the field to the bottom of your screen. Once again, one of those receivers will come back into the backfield. Handoff's going to go to him. Ball's, Ball's going to pop loose. Looked like it bounced right in the hands of a Wayne Trace player. And we'll see who's going to unpile it. And it's going to be one of the linemen for Crestview who's going to come up on top of that one, Wesley Lud Ludwig. Yeah, Ludwig's going to come up with it, and that was huge for Crestview as the ball came on the ground. It's kind of blown up. Dyson Scott, number 85, was the first one in the backfield to blow the play up. Kale Winnens had to be, I and mean, the ball was right there in his bread basket and popped loose. Yeah, Cal, guy that missed the game a year ago, he sat out with COVID, so you know it would have been important for him to make a big play. So it's a loss of uh, three on the play. It's going to bring up third and 12. And a quick pitch coming in the middle of the field. Here's Penix working his way around, and he's going to work his way as Bryson Penix is going to find a little bit of running room. Kind of an odd play, the fake to the front side. Gets the Wayne Trace defense to overpenetrate. Tremendous block to get Sin out of the way. That's Connor Sheets coming down number 66 to get Penix free. And we've been here before, right? Crestview knocking on the doorstep of another touchdown. Can they finally convert? That Wayne Trace defense has risen up twice already tonight. 18 yards on the run, first and goal from the nine. In that pistol look, handoff goes right back. Penix trying to stretch to the outside. Because someone's trying to grab his jersey, trying to pull him down. Still going to fight forward. He's in a seated position inside the five. And about the three, a little John going on. Ooh, here we go. A little face-to-face -face action. Yeah, just telling the other guys on the other side, yeah, I really appreciate you playing hard. Eggleston, great block right there. Good block on the outside as well. Creative hand blocking by Garrett Yinger to get Penix free. Second and goal coming from the two-yard line. Officials really letting guys play tonight. Mark it back at the three, it looks like. Do you see a good, great shot from our crew right there? Nose of the football at the three-yard line. Second and goal. A two, different look this time. Two back set. Handoff's going to go to the second man through, trying to fight forward is Klein. <laughs> what a night. For Mr. Sin, number 23, coming from the inside linebacker position. Knife's in there and makes a tackle, or else this would have been a touchdown for Crestview. Say no gain on the play. Here we go, third and goal from the three. It's been the troublesome position for Crestview tonight. Only Five wide set, four to the top. Once again, a man will come in motion. And now, keeping it himself, will be Carson Hunter, and he's gonna get in for the Leland Smith touchdown. Now look at Carson Hunter, looking like Cam Newton, his favorite quarterback on that one, no doubt about it. They're gonna run the motion and the open option to that side. It wasn't gonna be an option as Carson Hunter said, no option coach, I'm keeping this for the touchdown. Tremendous run, look at the determination on him as he took it in there. I know Grandma Diane would be excited for that one. He wanted to say hi to Grandma Diane. Grandma Diane definitely celebrating on that touchdown run. And again, our touchdown sponsor, Leland Smith Insurance That's Services, your first call for all of your insurance needs. Extra point is blocked, and we're right back to a tie. Six all between Crestview and Wayne Trace. Six, six. 
on our Lodix Jewelry scoreboard here as we march through this third quarter. Partner, kind of an interesting football game. Zeros across the board, mm -hmm. two quarters, two drives, two touchdowns in our second half. Well, you think both coaches went in at halftime and said, fellas, we have to score to win this football game, right? Can't win at 0-0. Zero, zero. Great answer by Crestview, set up on the Number tremendous return by Kellen Putnam. Putman put him in prime minutes. position, and then big players make big plays Raiders, in big games. 12. Carson Hunter said, Cole Coach, Boyd I'll get it done. 13. Ties this thing up. His three-yard touchdown run caps off an eight-play, 43-yard drive, took four and a half minutes off the clock. That's where we stand right now, six all. Kind of an odd formation to kick this one off by Crestview. Now everyone will fan out. You set up like that, fainting that you're going to kick the surprise on side, the little pooch. Maybe they watched the Nebraska game last week. <laughs> yeah. Scott Frost definitely scuffling in Nebraska. Short kick, good return, big hole to the sideline. A Tucker Antoine, and he is going to get the Raiders in a Crestview territory. And Connor Sheets, the kicker with the touchdown saving tackle. This is nothing more than a kick out and a kick out on the side. Wall it off inside. And Antoine's going to stride it out. Has a chance to go all the way. But the tackle is going to be made by Connor Sheets. And boy, both teams kind of struggling with kickoff return to start to the second half. And Wayne Trace will start at the Crestview 40. Seeing our Lodix Jewelry scoreboard, 2.55 to go, third quarter. We're going to stay with Cole Moorhead at quarterback. I think we're going to see him the rest of the way. Moorhead looks to throw, long throw, out to that far sideline, out to Tucker. Had the big, uh, or Antoine, I should say, had the big kick return. He's going to be out near first down. Hey, look at the arm on Moorhead. Kind of gets his feet out of position, but he's got a little bit of a rifle as well. All arm, no technique on that one, but not just a runner showing that he's got himself a little bit of a gun there. Gain of nine is going to bring him second and one from the 31-yard line. Five receivers set out of the Raiders. Moorhead will keep this one straight up the middle. First down and more. Ball's loose. Ball's going to pop loose. Looks like one of the linemen is going to fall on top of it. There's a scrum for it. Officials are going to separate everyone here. And it is going to be Crestview football. Kyle Four almost falls on it again for Wayne Trace. Let's we'll see who chops this thing out. Right there, it's going to be chopped out by number 53, Westland Ludwig. Tremendous play. And if you're not used to carrying the football, sometimes you forget high and tight is the way you should go. Moorhead coughs it up. Costly turnover for Wayne Trace. Crestview gets this back late in our third quarter, and they'll start from their own, what, 25, the officials having a discussion here. Is there a problem with the clock? Did the clock run? There is a flag, flag on apparently. the ground. There is a flag. We do see it way back in the Crestview huddle. Is this going to cost Crestview possession? We have an unsportsmanlike. So Crestview threw the football after recovering it. So unsportsmanlike against Crestview. It's going to cost them from some valuable field position here. So from their own roughly 25-yard line, that's going to back them up near their own 10. And it's the big 15-yard walk-off, but the important part is they will have the football. Yeah, coaches, the five variety, you know, you don't like them, but, you're, you know, it's not After that big a deal. But, boy, those 15 yarders, the they hurt in a big on. way. Coaches absolutely despise those. You come to, If you committed a 15-yard penalty, you better go to the other side of the, the sideline, not near the head coach, because he'll let you know. Here is Kellen Putnam on the cutback is going to come around. And he's going to be down. About the 20 yard line here is to take a look at the play. Yeah, one of their favorite plays tonight, that quick screen out of that bunch look. Putnam is going to take it all the way to the other side. But how about the Wayne Trace defensive effort? Look at all the guys railing up to stop Putnam, being led first by Jade Pierce making the tackle. Late in this game, four guys for Wayne Trace still getting involved defensively. 
second and five now from the 20. Again, that five receiver set. We're back. We'll come back this time. It's Klein. Klein will get the handoff with the cutback. Is fighting forward. Looks like he's going to be just shy of the first down. Brought down by number 23, Ezra Sin. Sin again playing that backside A, ready for the cut on the zone. Johnny on the spot makes the tackle again. He has been there every single time taking care of that cutback. Klein will pick up about three, so third and short now under center this time. And the I formation will give to the fullback, first man through. It's trying to get a first down. It looks like the uh, Knights were able to do it. Well, it's tough to do. You haven't been under center all night long. You finally go under center and get the exchange done right. Tough play. Looks like it's ordinary, but it really isn't. And just going with Penix, get under center. He's got the first down to 26. Now we'll see what Crestview will do here with a minute to go in the third quarter. Has a feel of maybe extra football time tonight or last drive gets it done. This has been a battle for the ages. Both teams doing a great job competing. And again, Wayne Trace trying to snap a long winless drought to Crestview. Crestview's won seven straight in the series. A little pump and go. Left open and slipping down, or it would have been six. Pass, is Hunter, Hunter, Hunter Jones, Jones, but it's going to have. Are they going to say he dropped it? And ten yeah, there's the. Pump and go on the screen and go that we talked about on the last drive, and Jones Did. never got a hold of it. He had touchdown in his eyes, took his hands off at the last second, fell to the ground. Oh, that poor young man. Tough break for the Knights. It's going to bring second and ten. Great call, though. Saw what we did. Wayne Trace jumping on the quick screen. Take advantage of it. So once again, after joining the four receivers, see Klein in the backfield. Hunter looking to throw under pressure. He's going to roll out far sideline, fires, and this one will be incomplete as it's going to be picked off on the sideline. You got to like the young man out of the play. He makes the catch. I got it. I got it. It's going this way. <laughs> well, that's Kyle Four. He's been a magnet with the football tonight. Third and 10, here with 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. Well, you might want to wonder why didn't Carson Hunter tuck it and go, run it when he got out of the pocket? Well, that was because Sin was right on top of him, vacated his linebacker's zone on the drop, came up, was going to make the hit. Sin has been absolutely everywhere for Wayne Trace. Carson Hunter in a shotgun will have a man going in motion, looking for those three receivers, fires middle of the field, and that one's going to be incomplete. And fourth down coming up here for Crestview. Well-schooled secondary for Wayne Trace. Plate coverage, quarters coverage kept everything in front. Knew that the down and distance mattered. Eggleston could not come up with it. Punt team under the field for the Knights. And that's going to bring in number 54, Garrett Yinger. The Yinger will do the punting. Runs into this one, high punt, way up above the lights. Antoine with a fair catch, and he will make that at the 34-yard line. That's where the Raiders will have it. Yeah, Yinger had some serious high hang time on that one. Smart move to go ahead and fair catch that football by Tucker Antoine. Tough for him to do that because you know he wants the ball in his hands after that big return on the kickoff return. Long to get his hands on it again and take off, but smart decision to fair catch it. Under 30 seconds to go, third quarter. Go back to Moorhead at quarterback. Take off and run here on first down, and he'll get out to about the 35, so we'll give him about a yard, and by the time they unpile the bodies, I believe that will be the end of the quarter. And Garrett Yanger comes up with the tackle again, and you get the feeling that Crestview finally figuring out how to play the new quarterback, Cole Moorhead, right? Don't be so aggressive going to get him. Let him come to you, break down, and make the tackle. That's how the third quarter will end, so Sky, a tied score heading into the final quarter here from Crestview. 6-6 our score between Crestview and Wayne Trace as we head 
to our uh, final quarter. We want to tell you that our title sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Crestview and Wayne Trace is the State Bank. Come on, Miles, you know the rest of this. State Bank, title Invested sponsor. Invested in Northwest That's and West right. Central Ohio yep. with skilled objective and caring financial planners. We're going to get you to do one of those by the end of the year. <laughs> Second down, coming up here, Moorhead under trouble, and he's going to go down right near the line of scrimmage. That's going to be a sack by Garrett Yinger, but you got to give a lot of credit to the secondary. Kept all the receivers in front, nobody to throw the ball to. And I believe Connor Tussing hate, also involved in that sack. Hate, hate to break it to you, it's not going to be a sack because it looks like it might have gained a yard. Well, if I'm the defensive coordinator, I'm, I'm marking that one as a sack because I want my big D line to feel good about themselves. Third and about nine coming up from the 36. If anything else, it was no gain. You keep a look at number five, Penix, on the outside. Looks like he might be coming on a blitz. Showing the rush three, but they might bring someone else. It's Cole Moorhead dropping back under pressure. He's going to unload this one, middle of the field, and it's intercepted at the 35-yard line as Parker Speed was able to jump that one and grab the interception. Now take a look at Moorhead. He's going to go vertical. He had no doubt about it. Going to get a little bit of pressure right there. It causes the thrower to go awry. Really good job by number 11, Parker Spieth. High point that football, big turnover. Crestview on a move. Knights will have it at their own 35. You see in our Lodic Jewelry scoreboard, six all with 11.06 to play. Miles was talking about an event. Did you get one there? That was definitely a big event, wasn't it? Answer the bell. Had to get a stop in a big way. Crestview comes up with a big play. I think the big event was Miles and his entourage making his way here into Knight Stadium at about 5.15 this evening. First down run, trying to rip the football away. Bryce Penix able to hold on to that one. He's going to be out across the 40-yard line. Well, I will tell you that. i tell you this, partner. I, I will never say I don't want to come here again. They, these people are fantastic. Visited at practice last week. In fact, both staffs I visited with this week, absolutely fantastic. Sometimes you go to watch practice and coaches is like, why are you here, right? Not mm -hmm. these guys. Both schools, very, very hospitable. Loved having us out here this week. I will come back to either school any day of the week. Yeah, I know it's not the first time WOSN has visited, but the right. first time that our crew yeah. has been here, first time I've been here, which I can mark off, is uh, the school numbers continue to climb for me personally. Here's a uh, give once again, going back to Penix, trying to find room to the outside. This time he's going to be hemmed in and bounced out of bounds after about a yard. Yeah, watch number three, Jude Stoller, Jude Stoller right out here. Play outside leverage, uses his hands, fights inside, gets off the block of Eggleston. One of our themes, one of our checks, was to make sure you squeeze everything back inside if you're Wayne Trace, doing that effectively. It was a flag that came in. It's on the, towards the Wayne Trace huddle. I'm going to been downfield when the action is... Because right now the ball's marked to the 42-yard line. Yeah, Crespi's already marked off their huddle. They know it's against them. We get. There's a hold. The official, I believe the official mic'd up, but doesn't have the mic very loud. So this is your 43rd school that you visited in Northwest Ohio, is that right? I, I was trying to do the math, and I believe, because I actually – realized on the way here there's a couple places that I forgot and there's also mm -hmm. a school right in Archibald I've been to two stadiums because they played at Spangler Field oh, no and kidding. I covered football wow. and then the new stadium so I believe this is the 45th 45th school in your career that you 45th covered 45th high school venue wow. in 22 years wow all right rank them right now 1 to 45 <laughs> <laughs> Well, I will tell you, there's been some on ones. There's been been some, uh, obviously, you go to big places. You know, we start our year every year, Defiance Napoleon. Right. I've been to Whiteford. I've been into yeah, that, into the forest. State up north. Yeah, Whiteford. Been to Ida. So there's a, Eden would be 45. He survived the scissor lift. He Not once, survive. but twice. And they're very nice people, though, as we get back to the action here. Second and 14 oh, run. And a tremendous sausage sandwich. In it Eden. was a good one. Yeah. So, Good popcorn here. People at Crespi know how to make their popcorn. 
Tried to get that inside zone to pop for them. Sets up a third down. Kind of got the yardage back after the penalty. And third and 10 coming up here. Back at their own 35 yard line as we near the nine and a half minute mark of this one. It's gonna bring up third and 10 for the Knights. So I actually counted last week and then every time I, oh yeah, there was this, oh yeah, I was here. Oh yeah, I did that playoff game between blah, blah, blah and blah, blah, blah. So third down throw, this one is gonna end up out in center field. And that's gonna be, which you can do. I'm, I'm baseball diving to our right here in a press box. That's Putnam, they try to get on a vertical. Again, a little miscommunication with his quarterback, Carson Hunter. He broke it to a post. Hunter thought he was going to go vertical outside. Miscommunicate sets up another fourth down. Crestview send their punt team out under the field. Yinger step into this one. A little bit more pressure applied that time. Once again, high punt, fair caught at the 34-yard line. Yeah, good Yinger. field position for the Raiders. Yinger brought the rain, right? Hey, farmers in the area, if you get a little dry crop, just get Yinger to punt because he'll bring the rain down with it. That was a sky ball again, all the way up into the lights. Well, one of my, oh, there's a student section. How about that theme night? And you see the fat heads and not sure what the Collared shirts, what's that a about? Lot of, a lot of back, I don't know, is it like preppy Zero night with a backwards hat? Yeah, might be, but yet, not, how many how, how many cowboy hats are on preppies, though? Zero, I don't know. Maybe he got the two, wrong memo. Seven, six, seven. That's next week. That was the tweet from two weeks ago. We sent you an updated one. <laughs> they got military appreciation night next week here. Raiders start from their own 34, going back into the ground, Moorhead. Moore is going to step out of bounds near the 40-yard line. Uh, this Crestview defense is feeling more comfortable dealing with Cole Moorhead at quarterback now, settling down, keeping him in front, letting him come to them as opposed to attacking him, giving him running lanes. Officially spotted at the 39, so pick up a five, second and five. Back to that five receiver set. And all window dressing as they keep it on the ground. Cole Moorhead's gonna take a big hit there. Yeah, Ren Sheets again. How many times has Ren Sheets, number 14 up top, made a big play for Crestview tonight. Yet another one as he fights off the block of Kyle Four. Uses those arms, those long arms. The stork out there doing a great job. Loss of one on the run is gonna bring up third and six from the 38 yard line. Again, just run with Moorhead, that one quick ball fake and he's gonna be pushed back after getting near the 40 yard line. And that's gonna be Eggleston combining with Nate Framuth Nate's a big fella, 5'9", 245, tough to move out of there. Plays his gap well, sets up fourth down. And that run game that Cole Moore had established early in the second half is kind of dried up as that Crestview defense is corralling him. Fourth and five from the 39. And the punt team coming out here. High snap. Trouble by Dangler, and he's just going to have no choice but take off and run. And he's going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. And now Crestview with a big opportunity here, Miles, to take the lead. Yeah, it looked like Dangler just couldn't get a hold of it. Watch the snap right here. Goes off to the right. Dangler does try to corral it, but spikes it in the ground, then picks it up. Goes from disaster to a little bit of glimmer right. Hope is it right here is it looked like he might be able to run for the first down. But Crestview corrals him and boy, what a huge play in this fourth quarter. Field position in favor now of Crestview. It's a Crestview, 7.40 to go. We'll have it at the Wayne Trace, 39. Trying to break the six all tie on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Quick run, trying to get it to the outside. Getting a block, getting outside is Isaac Klein. 
Now I want you to see the end of this run. You're going to see Kellen Putnam, number three, get a tremendous block, clearing it out right there. Look at that. Just keep working and working and working. Who says receivers don't block? Well, here in Crestview, Ohio, they do. Game of 13 on the run. You take a look at the replay brought to you by Carey Insurance and Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. I guess I should say Convoy, Ohio, right? Because we're technically in Convoy. Yes, we're technically okay. in Convoy. Yeah. Once again, going to Klein, breaking it to the outside, down the sideline, still on his feet, and it looks like he's going to be inside the 20-yard line. And they found something they liked, that outside zone. Penick's going to seal it off inside right there, get a block on the inside. The down block by Bo Eggleston, and another good block on the perimeter by Kellen Putnam, and they are convoying here in Convoy. I wonder if this is Chris Christopherson's favorite town in Ohio. Gain a nine on the run is going to bring up second and one. A little rubber ducky joke for you right there. And then you looked around like you were so pleased and no one's paying any <laughs> attention to you. Uh, four people will get that joke. That's all right. Second down run this time goes to the left side. Klein, the ball carrier. As Isaac Klein will have the first down. Picks up four for the Knights. Tremendous block. Number Trips 65 number seals it. Pierce. That's Kreischer, Preston Kreischer. Gives the junior. The See what happens when you run zone, right? You got to stay lateral, but yet still get on a guy. So that means moving your feet and using your upper body strength at the same time. It's a gain of three gets him to the 14 yard line. Fresh set of downs. We near the seven minute mark. Wayne Trace looking for his first win over Crestview since 2013. Again, trying to bounce to the outside. Isaac Klein. Klein's going to run through one tackler, and he's going to get near the five-yard line. Isaac Klein running hard. He's going to run through an arm tackle. Blake Stoller, number 88. You're going to see it right there. Stoller gets on the back shoulder pad, falls off. Klein a little gimpy making his way to the sideline. And we're, it looks like Crestview will send in Braxton Leith. Yeah, Leith, just a freshman coming in. He is the single back behind Penix. Hand off this time. They'll go to Bryson Penix, and Penix is going to get into the end zone and score the touchdown. Yeah, how about Penix? Scores the touchdown and gives us a little bit of the flex. Penix power, big time for Crestview. So Bryson Penix with the five-yard touchdown run. He's going to run through one tackle, two tackles, and then one right there, three tackles. And says, look at me, the double bicep pose by Penix. Put Crestview back in front. And it looks like they will go for two here. The old lonesome polecat formation. Good to see Isaac Klein back in. You see him lined up as that tight end to the left side. Trying to run it, and the two point's going to be good as Hunter will take this into the end zone. Yeah, Carson Hunter's just going to pick his spot. Talk about vacating the middle. You do it by formation. Wayne Trace does answer correctly. But there's going to be a seam in the middle because there's just nobody there to defend as the formation was so wide, sideline to sideline. So it takes just a minute and a half for Crestview to get the touchdown. Knights in front of Wayne Trace. Well, a big Leland Smith touchdown. This time Bryson Penix from five yards out. Has put Crestview in front of Wayne Trace, 14 to six. Touchdowns tonight sponsored by the Leland Smith Insurance Service. Your first call for all of your insurance needs. And a good shot at Colton Royer, the special teams coach, trying to get his guys fired up. Can't afford to give up another big return by Wayne Trace. Got to have a great kickoff right here for Crestview. 14-6 on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Scoreboard tonight brought to you by Lodix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Coldwater or Van Wert or online at Lodix.com. Yeah, this is a tremendous staff that they have here at Crestview. A lot of guys played in college football. Dylan Henry played at Bluffton. He's the quarterback coach. Celebrated his 28th birthday yesterday. 
How great is that? Yeah, go to football practice on your 28th birthday, have a big game the next night. Life is good. Short kickoff returned from the 20-yard line. Tucker Antoine trying to break free. He's got to get out near the 40. It's funny you mentioned uh, coaches at college, some with maybe a little bit more experience than that. It sure is. Nice return right here to get Wayne Trey set up. Yeah, well, one guy uh, on the staff, he played at Bowling Green a little bit of time in the NFL. Spent eight years in the NFL for the Broncos, Vikings, and Redskins. And I know what a Bowling Green fan you are, so I'll let you tell everybody who it is. It is. I have to go through my notes again here. Oh, Corey Lichtenstein. Yeah, Corey Lichtenstein. Homegrown Crestview guy. Mm -hmm. Remember when he played at Bowling Green? It was a big deal for a guy yeah, coming absolutely. out to Bowling Green. Yeah, played in the NFL. He's trimmed down quite a bit from his time in the NFL. His direct snap once again. This Ball, the Crestview coach is saying the ball popped loose there at the end of that run, going back on the ground with Cole Moorhead. And Moorhead's going to lose a couple of yards. Now, Ren Sheets once again makes a play on that side for a tackle for loss. And you just know Wayne Trace, they're going to move the football from here. They're going to have to get some throwing going by Cole Moorhead. Or do you, do you go back to Stoller because he can throw the football? But trying to run the quarterback run from here on out is going to be swallowed up by Crestview. Wayne Trace comes out in pass formations. They are right here with a five receiver set. Looking to throw out of it, dropping back. Well, Morad Canther has got a receiver over middle of the field and it's intercepted. Intercepted Hunter Jones and Jones is going to slide down out across the 40. And you got to believe, partner, that Crestview is going to try to find a way to run out this final five minutes. Now you got to feel good for Hunter Jones, right? Remember he had the screen and go drop early in this half all by himself? Well, this time he goes up and catches it, gets two hands on it, takes it all the way into his hands. Great job, or else that would have been a huge play. Jude Stuller's who they're trying to hit. And how about the smarts of Hunter Jones? This goes down to a knee so he doesn't take a hit and a possible fumble. Well, we talked about the turnovers, the turnover problems for two games for Wayne Trace. Miles, you look at just the second half alone, a fumble right. and now two interceptions. Yeah, the fumble was really costly because they were driving yet again off that quarterback run by Moorhead. So the Knights up a score with 5.06 to go. Turn it back onto the ground they go as Isaac Klein is going to get out across the 45-yard line, but... We do have a penalty flag. And Crestview's kids have their hands in the air like, what do we do? They have the guilty look. Usually that means you committed a foul. Going to have. Well, evidently Crestview was having her hands up like, are you going to call it? And they did. 15 yards from the end of the run. He's going to move the ball into Wayne Trace territory Wayne down Trace to the 38 yard line. line. Isaac Klein couldn't get to the outside on the outside zone. So he reads the cutback lane, gets positive yardage. Show you how amazing high school athletes are now, partner. The idea is he can get to D gap. If it's not there, he has to bounce back, and he has a wherewithal where he can bounce back to play side A gap. That's some quick feet right there from go from D to A gap in a hurry. Crestview with one play in the penalty in Wayne Trace territory, trying to salt this one away. They go back under the ground to Penix. Penix will get not a lot. Yeah, it's Moorhead that. Drops down and no makes a tackle. At some point in time, timeouts are going to be a, a factor for Wayne Trace. Down by eight. I think inside of four minutes, you have your three timeouts. You start calling them for Wayne Trace. Second and ten coming up here from the 38-yard line. As Crestview breaks the huddle with 15 on the play clock. Going to let this run all the way down, down to five. Snapped with three. Here's Klein, has room to the left side, cuts up field. Klein Someone's going to reach in and grab him by the ankle and knock him down, just shy of the first down. You got to wonder if 
fatigue is starting to become an issue for Wayne Trace. Look at the wall just getting destroyed on that left-hand side. The left-hand side of the offensive line for Crestview now dominating. This is a Wayne Trace defense that's played a lot of snaps defensively. And Gata Seven's going to bring up third and three. We're now accepting nominations for the John Reed Leadership Award. Nominate coaches who exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, commitment to others, and excellence on the field. Nominations can be made at WOSN.TV slash John Reed. Third and three, trying to get the first down. They'll turn it over now to the freshman Braxton Leith. Leith having the pile move forward. It's going to continue to get pushed forward, and it's going to be a first down at about the 16-yard line. Watch the determination by everybody in the black jerseys getting on a white jersey at the end of this play. Keep pushing, keep pushing. One, two, three. You're going to see a fourth guy get in here just moving their feet, moving that white pile. Tremendous effort and finish by Crestview. Gain of 15 on the run. Sets up a first down from the 16-yard line. Now under three minutes to go. Wayne Trace still have all three of its timeouts left. Handoff is the fake as they keep it on the ground. Hunter, Carson Hunter's going to keep that one. He'll get inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Yeah, you got to do that once in a while when you're a zone run team to keep the defense honest. Quarterback keep. There's going to be a timeout finally, I think, called by Wayne Trace. Yeah, Raiders to take the first timeout. We'll step aside here late in this fourth quarter. Crestview trying to put it away. Hey, Raider Roberts, Miles Holiday back with you here from Crestview. 2.32 to go. 14-6. Crestview holding on to that lead with the football deep in Wayne Trace territory, Miles. Trying to salt this one away. That's one of those moments when you're in a huddle and you look at your offensive line and you, you look at their eyes and you say, fellas, another first down, we win this football game. Let's keep blocking. You're, you're blocking like crazy. And you remind your running backs, what do you tell them? Hold on to that football, right? Two hands on the ball. Don't drop that football. It's the hopes and dreams of our community in your hands. Crestview trying to extend this win streak to Wayne Trace to eight in a row. Had a nice conversation with some of the guys up here in the press box. This is a football program. Was dormant for 16 years. Played through the fall of 81. Dropped it and resumed in 99. Well, that lateral goes to the right side as they fake the sweep, kind of pitch back the opposite way. A lot of window dressing for what ends up being a loss of the play and a timeout taken here. Now that play makes me nervous because it, you're faking one way, then you're throwing a blind pitch the other direction. That could easily hit the hands and hit the ground, and all of a sudden Wayne Trace has it. The loss of one is going to back him up to the 15, so third and 10 with 2.22 to go. You see there in a Lotics Jewelry scoreboard. It's Crestview not really thinking touchdown. They'd like to have one. Just to you know, put that exclamation point on, but as you said, really it's it's first down or bust at this point. Yeah, if you're Crestview, you just want to make sure the clock keeps running. Avoid the temptation of throwing the football. Right? There's only one timeout left. I know you're close, but a lot of things have to go wrong for you to lose this football game, right? Do the smart thing, run the football, force William Trace to call that timeout. Yeah, they got one left with 222 to go. Both teams will jump into conference play next week. Miles and I hinted at it a couple of times. Wayne Trace and the GMC. Don't know if there is kind of a clear-cut favorite in the Green Meadows Conference. While the Northwest Conference, you have a handful of teams. Columbus Grove, which, by the way, we know was leading Patrick Henry at the half. In their game, they're expected to contend. Lipsick's been pretty solid. Allen East has been a playoff team in years past. Handoff on third down, trying to get to the outside. And a good gain tackle there is about three white jerseys will stop. Brought down by Bryson yeah. Pendix here as Wayne Trace will use its final timeout. Yeah, look at the combination blocks to the play side. Working all the way up to second forward. level. Pendix gets some positive yardage. And again, number 23 for Wayne Trace in on the tackle again. That is Sin, who is doing his best Chris Spielman impression tonight. He has been absolutely all over. 
the football field. A fourth and six when play resumes from the 12 yard line. 213 now showing in our Logs Jewelry scoreboard. It'll be interesting to see who's going to get our Dynamic Dude of the Night award at the end of this. A lot of candidates in this one, right? There has been a few. We'll see who our director, Ken Reeker, tells us to interview. We pull the curtain back. It's not our choice. It's whoever Ken says to grab. <laughs> uh, there has been. Ken Reeker, our producer, great job as always. He's going to be celebrating a birthday in two days on Sunday. If there was a 58-yard line on the football field, that would be his favorite number on the football field. But. Almost in Canada. Yep. A fourth down, Crestview's going to go for it, try to put this one away from the 12-yard line. Looking to throw is Hunter. Looking middle of the field into the end zone, and it's going to be incomplete. So with 2.05 to go, the Raiders will have a chance here. They need to go the length of the field. And not a bad decision, right? It's fourth down. Even if you get stopped on a run play, the clock's going to stop. So make an opportunity. Go post on the back side, one-on-one. -on -one. You have a shot. Maybe Hunter Jones can make a play. Well defended, knocked out. Derek Dangler again comes up with a play for Wayne Trace. 2.05 left in this one. You are way backed up, down by eight. But at least you gave yourself a shot. Another goal line stand for Wayne Trace. No timeouts left either. This clock will stop momentarily on first downs or if you get out of bounds. So Moorhead in at quarterback. Throws middle of the field. This one's going to be caught. Trying to get out of bounds. Tucker Antoine. He'll have it out across the 25-yard line. We take a look at the carry insurance replay here. We'll stop momentarily and pick up a 14 on the pass play. Get the Raiders out to the 26. Moorhead looking to go once again. Ball's going to be knocked away. Still loose on the field. Big pile up, and it looks like one of the linemen, maybe a receiver, jumped back there. Come across the bottom of the pile is Nate Osborne. Junior lineman, number 62, the one at the bottom of the pile, saves the football for the Raiders. A lot of time running off the clock here. Be backed up, loss of 11, back to the 15-yard line. Loss of 11, bring up second and 21. Moorhead under pressure. He's going to take off and run. Long way to go for the first down. He'll be out across the 20-yard line. The clock continues to run. Third down coming up here. Quickly have to get up to the line of scrimmage. Under a minute now to go in our Lottix Jewelry scoreboard. Wayne Trace, two plays, keeps the game alive here. Third down pass, long pass to the sideline. It's going to be read pretty well. And a nice stop made there by Parker Spieth, number 11 for Crestview. Fourth and 14 coming up here from the 24, we'll call it 24, fourth and 12. Fourth down play. Taking off and running will be Cole Moorhead. He's going to be out of bounds. Enough for the first down. Stops clock with 21 seconds to go. He'll get out to the 38. So big scramble. Gets the first down on fourth down. Officials will get the chain set. With him out of bounds. Clock will not start till the snap. Man will go in motion. Moorhead looking to throw, under pressure again, fires towards the sideline, and the pass Moorhead's is going to be ruled incomplete. Out of bounds by number 11, As Race, Race Price will have it, but he was out of bounds. It stops clock seconds with 13 10. seconds to go. Second and 10 from the 38-yard line. And 
And now we've got issues here with the officials as they misspotted the football. Now marked it back a yard where it should be at the 38-yard line. Second and 10, 13 seconds left. Just a couple of plays left here for the Raiders. Still trying to go 62 yards. Need a score and a two-point just to tie this one up. Moorhead, throw this one as far as he can down the far sideline. It's incomplete. Third down coming up here with seven seconds to go. So one final play coming up here for the Raiders. They try to keep this alive, going with sophomore quarterback Cole Moorhead. Third and the ball game with seven seconds to go from their own 38. Moorhead has everyone set, gets the snap. Unloads this one, middle of the field. He's going to overthrow everyone. And one second left showing on the scoreboard. So Wayne Trace will have one final play. So left one second up there. So one final opportunity, Crestview coaches pleading with the officials to let that one second run off. Fourth down, and essentially fourth and goal, and Crestview nice is gonna call a timeout. They wanna make sure everyone's set here. They wanna let their defense know every opportunity that could happen here. Fourth and 10 from the 38 yard line with a second left. Varsity and JV volleyball team is home against Wayne Trace next Thursday, starting at 5 30 p.m. To join us next week is uh, Miles and I, set for the NWOAL League opener, Wasion Liberty Center, where our crew will be at. And check our full listings on our website, WOSN.TV, for a complete list of all of our games covered coming up next Friday night. Play resumes. Wayne Trace has fourth and 10. Here we go, fourth and 10 from the 38-yard line. Come on, football fans, you watch a spectacular game out here. Crestview trying to make this eight in a row. Needs one final stop on defense. Snap coming. Quickly get rid of it. Hook and ladder play coming. There's the fake on one lateral trying to throw this one. A forward lateral to midfield. Flags come flying out as Wayne Trace will get into Crestview territory, but that is going to do it. So the flags will get picked up here. They will talk about the penalty. Is going to be an illegal forward pass here. As we wait for the officials. There is the signal. Penalty is going to be declined. And that is going to do it. So our final tonight here from Crestview. The Knights have extended their win streak to eight in a row over Wayne Trace. They improved to 3-0 and as they get the win over the Raiders, 14 to six. We'll take a timeout when we come back. Our Miles Holiday will be joined down on the field by our dynamic due to the game when we return. 14-6, our final Crestview gets the win over Wayne Trace. Knights extend their win streak to, over the Raiders to eight straight and 11 of the last 12. And our Miles Holiday's caught up with one of the players made that happen this evening. Yeah, Wrench Sheets, our dynamic dude of the week. The recipient of the Player of the Week Award, the WOSN helmet, the coveted WOSN helmet. You guys moved to three and oh, this was a war, 0-0 zero, zero at half. What'd you guys talk about at halftime to get this win? Uh, we just had to make our adjustments on offense. Uh, both defenses were playing great. On offense, we just had to you know, step up our game on the O-line. They were uh, letting a couple things through. We just talked about that, you know, kept uh, working our butts off on defense. 
Now, they made a change at quarterback to start the second half. A lot of quarterback run that was affecting you guys. You kind of button it down, though, uh, late in the third quarter. What was the difference to take the quarterback run away? Uh, well, we did not really see it coming. We thought pass all game, switch their quarterback, and then basically run, ran the whole rest of the game. So, you know, we kept putting uh, four people on the line instead of three like we were doing. You know, we just had b big plays, and people stepped up to the challenge. Now, early in the game, you, you caught a post pattern and, and got got knocked a little woozy, it looked like. Uh, what happened there? We were glad to see you come back in the game. Yeah, I uh, just got hit in the head going down. I felt great, actually. I was just laying there making sure I wasn't hurt. Coach talked about after the game that, you know, you guys have big plans, playoff game, home, keep winning. You know, what's it going to take for you guys moving into the MWC next week against Allen East? We just got to improve on offense and defense, both sides of the ball. And, you know, communication's got to get a little better. Uh, just keep winning, doing what we do. Now, one of the best things in high school football is after you guys win, you are getting to sing the fight song with your, your band. Uh, what, what's that like, that moment? How cool is that? Oh, uh, it's, it's great. Coach Lossi's so he loves it. It just makes us all feel better. Congratulations, our player of the game. And more importantly, congratulations on getting a big win. Thank you. Ren Sheets, he's a dynamic dude, Randy. And again, yeah, played a uh, big part, both sides of the football for the Knights. 14-6 again, our final. They get the win over Wade Trace. We want to thank everyone making our night here at uh, Crestview High School uh, possible. Starts with Austin Fleming, athletic director here at Crestview High School. Of course, uh, Curtis and Sam running the cameras and our director, Ken Reeker. Also want to thank Kelly Getz back at Master Control at our WOSN studios in Lima. So that win streak for Crestview stays alive. They stay undefeated at 3-0. Wayne Trace falls to 1-2. and It's also eight in a row now for the Knights as they score the win this evening over the Wayne Trace Raiders. For my partner, Miles Holiday, and our entire WOSN crew, I'm Randy Roberts. Thanks for watching, everyone.